on a beautiful evening in Wilmington, Delaware from Abyssinio Stadium. It's Delaware Live Sports here with your high school football Friday night showcase. We've got some great ones all around up and down the state of Delaware today and tomorrow. But we, the North Crew, have a fantastic matchup of a battle of undefeateds here at Abyssinio Stadium. Good evening, everyone. Nick Allison Drini alongside Jason Winchell and Mike Lang. We are here at Abyssinio Stadium, the home of the Howard Wildcats here tonight as they will take on the traveling Wilmington Friends Quakers. And guys, this is an absolute dream matchup here. Both of these teams, 6-0 combined, 12-0, both of them. And now they're going to go to go to work here against each other here at Abyssinio. A 5 o'clock kickoff here to, or this evening on Friday, but it is a good one. Number one versus number two. So, you, you know, you don't see that too often here all the time. We got lucky with this one, guys. Oh, absolutely. It's a, you know, good, you know, we're past the mid-season mark. These two teams, uh, I'll tell you guys, I was in the bunker on <laughs> Sunday. Shocker. And one and two seed right here. Uh, if the playoffs started today, Friends as the one, Howard is the two. So this one is, I think, uh, a good early test, is, and hopefully one of these teams might be able to catch that top seed with a win here today. Yeah, Nick, perfect afternoon here. It's uh, it's, it's starting to actually cool off just a little bit. It was a little bit uh, unseasonably warm here <laughs> for October, but who's complaining, right? We're going to have a beautiful weekend with a lot of good football. Uh, some good games tonight down at Lake, Lake at Caravel, uh, tomorrow Smyrna and Dover, and uh, some, some other good ones. I don't know how the schedule I'll memorize, but I know that Benny's where tonight? Benny's at uh, Cape Antelope. Cape in uh, Sussex Central, I believe. So lots of matches up and down the state. DMA and St. Mark's later tonight. So uh, what a, a good weekend. That's a, a game that a lot of people have been looking forward to. That one available on the NFHS Network, by the way. Uh, after this one, of course, you don't want to be turning this game off. And we are now underway with the coin toss. Your captains for tonight's matchup in your class to a battle of undefeateds for Wilmington Friends. It was Eamon Grubb, Robbie Tattersall, and Colin Herring. Friends gonna receive. And Howard, they won the toss, they'll receive. Kevin Ford was the captain out there for the Howard Wildcats, so it is set, fellas. We are ready to go kick off as the Howard Wildcats deferred to half number two, so we'll get a chance to check out Rob Tattersall and the Wilmington Friends Quaker offense. Here first tonight from Abyssinia. Nick, I am, now. I'm looking forward to this matchup. Oh, hold on. We'll pause for the national <laughs> anthem. Got the anthem out of nowhere, Nick. Just kind of started when we weren't even expecting it. Yeah, I was uh, getting ready to say that I think this is a great quarterback uh, battle between two of the top quarterbacks. Uh, I think 2A is lucky this year with the quarterback class they have. You have Albaro from Archmere, but you got these two right here, and both these quarterbacks beat Archmere this year, Nick. That's right. Now. How about a group of quarterbacks we got in class 2A for sure? But let's take a moment. Let's talk about these quarterbacks. Robert Tattersall here for friends. What a season, Jason, as you just alluded to, that he is having here in 2022. Uh, one of the main reasons this undefeated Wilmington Friends team is 6-0, doing it on defense, had a pick six this year a few weeks ago, and obviously doing it on offense, can run the ball, throw the ball. He's going to be everywhere. He's a player to look out for here tonight 
for Wilmington friends. You look over at the other side, R.J. Matthews. He is having a phenomenal season, another year in this offense with his dad as the offensive coordinator, Ashawn Matthews Sr. And R.J. having a great year, 996 yards, 13 touchdowns to just one interception. Last year he ran for 63 yards combined for the season. And this year, 200 yards and eight touchdowns already through six weeks. So a lot to look forward to here in the matchup of quarterbacks and a lot to look forward to overall here tonight from Abyssinio Stadium. We are almost set to get this one going. And kicking off for Howard, it's going to be Eric Diaz Carrasco. And back to receive for Wilmington friends is number 20, Andrew McKenzie. So we are underway. McKenzie will have it. He had a little bit of a hole. It closes up quickly, but decent field position to get things going for the Friends offense. They'll start this one around the 35. And guys, here we go. First quarter action. Here you go, Nick. Mr. McKenzie sitting literally right in front of you. And uh, I believe a great school classmate of mine. How about that? How about that? Again, it's Delaware. There you go. It is Delaware. I need to talk to him at halftime. We got some things going on. So we mentioned Robert Tattersall. You'll see Jaden Wheelie. You mentioned McKenzie in the backfield. And, and uh, Hudson's Watzka, assistant, the, he's a split out right there, Nick. He's somebody to watch, number nine. So Tattersall going to start in the shotgun, sitting to his right, or his left is McKenzie. It's going to be quarterback power here on first down, and he's got good yardage. A nice hole opened up up front by that Wilmington Friends offensive line, and that carry for Tattersall is good for eight you'll, on first down. You'll see a lot of that today, Nick, and uh, he did that well against Archmere. Um, and you can pick up eight yards on first down on a quarterback keeper, you'll take that every time. And he, he does everything. He runs, he throws, he's the punter. Uh, That's right. He, you know, he's not the place kicker. They have one of the best to do that. But Robbie Tattersall does just about everything for this team. Now they'll put him back in the gun, back to each side of Tattersall on second and two. Another quarterback power. He'll follow both blocklers trying to get to that line to gain. And then a Howard player jumping on top <laughs> of the pile there. Got to be careful there on the outside, but it's going to be close and looks like he's not going to have enough. Give him a yard on that pickup, and now here we go. First third down of the evening, third and one here for Wilmington Friends. Oh, we might get a measurement. That looked kind of fun, Nick, jumping up on top of that pile. But he is definitely a yard short, so he has to get to the 45 for the first down, and it's spotted close to the 44. And this Howard defense has also been spectacular this season. We saw them shut out DMA for the time being back in week number one. <laughs> Christian Pope up front, Alzion Triplett, he's the middle linebacker, those two leading the team in tackles. Third and one now for Friends, it's Tattersall in the gun. Quarterback power this time to the right side, he'll have first down yardage as he follows his two blockers up to midfield. New set of downs upcoming for the Quakers. You're getting a good look at the game plan. It all revolves around Robbie Tattersall. Uh, he's gonna run, he'll throw, we mentioned it before. He, he, directs this offense and I'm not surprised if he calls some of his own plays out there. Of course his dad is the coach, his grandfather was the coach for 50 years. So new set of downs for the Quakers, they're right at midfield as they try to get into Howard territory. Here's first and 10, Tattersall in the gun. This time they'll try to get him out to the edge, he has some room, able to get the corner, now he's up, first down yardage and more, pushed out of bounds on the far sideline near the 38 yard line. That's where they'll mark it. And a 12 yard carry for Robbie Tattersall. He's got four carries now. Every play has gone to number 17. Yeah, I think that was Al Zion Triplett with the tackle number six, I believe, for friends. And really, Robbie Tattersall ran into him with the shoulder, Nick, and almost pushed himself out of bounds with the momentum. Al Zion Triplett, a senior, he's their leading tackler this season. 32 tackles, a tackle for loss. Also, they're leading ball carrier in terms of carries offensively. So first and 10 into Howard territory at the 38 now for the Quakers. McKenzie to the left. Tattersall gonna follow the blockers once more and why not? If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right Nick? <laughs> Keep on going to the well right now as uh, the, he's picking up some big gains. That's at least a gain of four that time for Rob Tattersall. 944 and ticking here, first quarter action from Abyssinio Stadium. And Wilmington Friends got the opening kickoff and they are putting together a nice drive here in their opening drive of the game. So that carry good for four yards. It's gonna set up second and six for the Quakers who are back in the gun. 
Once again, this time they'll switch sides to the left. He's got some blockers in front of him, and he's going to carry a few defenders forward. Robbie Tattersall is putting on a show here on the opening drive. Can't stop him, you know. And Jason said, it. why would you switch up? It also opens up the possibility of a pass. You know, he's, throw, he's run, run, run. Howard's going to key on the run. Tattersall could open it up. Another first down for Tattersall and the Quakers. At 26. As they're looking to I'm sorry, 21. get into the red zone here. Nick, my, my, math, my math game's not very strong. <laughs> and that carry good for, I believe, about 11 yards. Yeah. That's a great opening drive for this Quakers team, Nick. And again, all run plays for number 17 in white. Just power and then getting him outside. We'll see what they do. Power to the left, following McKenzie. And this time, Howard was ready for it. They're going to stop him for the shortest gain here so far today. That's going to be about one or two. Yeah, number 59. Out of the roster in front of me, Nick. That was, that was uh, number 59 right there on the screen. Made that one. Good job by him to get through that line. Pursuit Christian Tattersall Pope. from, from behind. Pope. Pope. One of the seniors that they have uh, did on senior day here. Yeah, this he's the guy you have to look out for, Jason, for sure defensively. 30 tackles. How about seven sacks on the <laughs> year for Christian Pope? That's good for one or more a game yeah, absolutely. through six weeks. So here we go, second and eight after the two-yard carry from Tattersall. Back in the gun he goes just outside the red zone. This time he's got some room through the right side. Picks up a decent amount, but he's going to be dragged down from behind in a fantastic play. On that right side of the defensive line, either Devin Jones or Desai Drummond able to pull him back from behind. Otherwise, Tattersall looking at some more green in front of him. About third and four here, so it's going to be a good test for both sides here. You know, they've gone to Tattersall every play. I'm not counting plays, Nick, but it's been every play. I know it's every play. <laughs> Eight plays, 48 yeah. yards on the drive, all for Rob Tattersall. Question is, do you give it to get it to Willie or Zawatkis? Uh, it's four down territory. I wouldn't Definitely. be surprised if you mix up a pass here. Maybe. And they do have a kicker. This is a chip shot for him. Yeah, they're just going to follow the blockers one more time. Or Jason, you just give it to Tattersall Why not? and have him run it. And it looks like he's going to have enough for a first down, and he does. It's like first and goal right at the ten. So give him five on that carry. Just inside the ten. So inside the 10-yard line go the Quakers here in their opening drive of the game. 7-13, clock continues to run here in the first quarter. Marking it at the 9. And I'll tell you, guys, just watching this, it reminds me a lot of that Tim Tebow offense <laughs> at the University of Florida. My favorite offense in history. <laughs> yeah. And Robbie Tattersall looking a lot like Tim Tebow here early in this one. Under seven minutes to play, quarter number one. Just outside the 10, first and 10. They can't get another first down, I believe. And once again, Tattersall going to follow the blockers inside, this time to the left. He got about four on that one. They're in good shape. Picks up four. That'll get him a little bit closer here. And so they're, they were at the 10-yard line. So they didn't mark it at the 11, which means it's first and goal from the 10. They cannot get a first down. So now it'll be second and about five or four from the five-yard line. Yeah, definitely first and goal. There's no uh, no first down in play here. All 10 plays, all 10 rushes for Rob Tattersall. Here on drive number one. Here he is back in the gun alongside McKenzie and Paul Beardell. Here comes some motion. Here's the snap. Tattersall following the blockers, lowering his shoulder, trying to extend into the end zone. And he just is short. He's going to be marked down at about the inch yard line inside the one. That's where they'll mark this one. I don't one. think you can get any closer without it being in the end zone. We'll give you a shot of where that football is. Nick, we're zooming as close as we can. Jay, take a look at that yeah. right there. I mean, it's uh, nose of the football uh, is on the goal line. It's like that. Well, I'll tell you guys line. what I would call. I think I'm going to give it to Tattersall. <laughs> I think I'd call quarterback power. We've seen about. Nine of them on this drive, two quarterback. Nick, two receivers split out. I'm not even zooming the camera out. Third and goal. Tattersall lost the snap. The ball is loose, and he's going to be hauled down in the backfield. Coming up and making the play, I believe, Number eight. Was, was Amir Madri. That is true. That's the freshman. He has 21 tackles on the year, a big part of that Howard secondary. Now, the question is, do you go for it on fourth and goal from the sixth? So you bring out uh, Christian, Christian Eddie Walker, and it looks like that's – in a game like this, what they're going to do, they're bringing get, out the kicker. I would put the points on the board. You know, we're, they already ran off almost seven minutes in this first quarter. I mean, we're down under five minutes left. How about that? 
And again, Rob Tattersall, 6'5", 210, the quarterback for Wilmington Friends. They gave him the ball 11 times on that drive. Here's the field goal attempt. It is up. It is through. And the Quakers, they strike first here on the road at Abyssinio. Friends lead Howard 3 to nothing with 439 remaining here in quarter number one. Yeah, that's a good opening drive, Nick. I know they, they were like an inch from getting seven points, but get the three. You know, it's a good opening drive. Uh, I think Howard will make some adjustments because it was a lot of Anderson on that open drive, and I think friends will counter. But that's a good opening drive, a good cone setter in this uh, matchup here. And uh, I think he kicked that field goal all the way on. I think it hit a car and it was driving by <laughs> out there. Again, that field goal good by Alessio. Kristen Eddie Walker, the senior kicker, who is one of the best kickers, Mike, you're going to see oh, here yeah. in the state of Delaware. Yep, uh, the other one also calls us, uh, calls us in the home field. That would That's be right. Collins. And we mentioned uh, the young man from Red Lion. Sam Crossan. Crossan. Um, I think all of them hit field goals in the 45-yard range this year. So they'll boot it away here. It's going to take a, a hop. It's going to bounce. And Howard going to try to get a return together. Able to break a few tackles, cut back inside. He's going to be brought down at around the 25-yard line. So Kevin Ford there on the return for Howard. And Nick, we're going to see a contrast here in offense. Is R.J. Matthews and Howard, they like that big play. You know, they're, they're happy to go. Oh, what happened down there, Nick? Yeah. They're happy to go for the, for the big play. We're all good, <laughs> you know. You got a lot of notes in here. We are in the small <laughs> booth today. We are in the small booth here at Abyssinio Stadium. Yeah, friends, coaches, or to our left, and they got are. a nice squad there. I was to say they're got a. Next time, I will have to bring a chair, though, fellas. Yeah. I will have to bring a chair. Yeah, we're all standing. Well, so here we go. First and ten for Howard our Matthews. Produ producer needs to sit down. Though. In the gun, and there it is, Mike. They'll take a shot on first down. Looking for Jamal Johnson. He adjusts in the air and he goes up and makes the catch, and he'll be brought down at the 35. Howard didn't waste any time with an answer there, Nick. <laughs> I think Mike called that. Uh, he said they might come out and try, hit a home run on the opening play. I love the play call there by Coach Ritter. He does such a great job with his game plan. And when you have a quarterback like Matthews, that's, that's good. And he can run, so he gives himself a lot of room. So that was Kelly on the catch. That was good for 40 yards. Oh, RJ doesn't know plays in. And now no, we they have don't a, have enough players on the field. And they use time out here with the sideline. And now they're going to stay under center. Matthews will turn and toss it to Triplett. Off the blocker's butt, tries to cut back inside, runs into a host of Quakers. And I think that was once again number 17, Rob Tattersall yeah, it was. in the mix. Also number 60 uh, in on that tackle, but Tattersall was definitely there. That, that whole play was just lost in the beginning with not enough players on the field. May have been better served taking a timeout there, but. You know, they'll end up losing two yards, Nick, so not a disaster. So, again, Kelly had the catch. He's having a pretty good year himself. Nine receptions, a, a buck 60, and two touchdowns. And you can see Robert how they, Kelly. I'm sorry, how they spread this field out. Now, some shifty movement here for Howard. Here on second and 12. They'll turn, hand off to Triplet up the left side. He's going to try to bounce it now to the sideline, and he's going to be rustled down. On the far sideline after a short gain by Jaden Willey. Yeah, it's a good job by the Quakers defense, Nick. They got uh, hit with that big play on the opening play, but the last two plays, their defense has held them to the minimum gain. Brings up a third and eight here as uh, we're down to 251. I am trying to get a scorecard forward, but if not, Mike will, Mike will continue to go to the scoreboard uh, after scores. I have a great view of the clock from here. Yep. Here we go, third and eight. They'll roll Matthews out on the bootleg and trying to get it to the inside receiver. Looked like an out to the sideline. I think he was looking for Kevin Ford. That pass falls incomplete, and now fourth and nine upcoming for Howard. Yeah, this is a tough call. You know, you're in a good spot where you, if you don't punt, you can go for it. You're, you're not really giving friends incredible field position here. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking it looks like they're going to go for it uh, here. I'm with you. With R.J. Matthews, he could just yep. he could pick up that eight yards in no time. Slot to the right for Howard. They've got two backs in the backfield, and now they'll snap it to Matthews in the gun. He's going to roll to the right. Similar play. And that pass is broken up. I believe that was McKenzie. Excuse me, McKenzie, alongside Paul Beardell and. 
One of them able to make a perfect play on the ball and break that one up. That's textbook in the secondary. Man, nice play by the Quakers. I think a good good option to go for it there by Howard, as we talked about. It just it, uh, didn't pay off, though. So. I mean, you punt the ball, Mike. It goes in the end zone. Yeah. You get a net of, what, 14 yards? 14 yards. There was no point yeah. to punt there. So, Nick, 232 to go here in the first quarter. I know we're working on that scoreboard. But, uh, you know, the important thing is, Jay, they can see the game, and we can tell them the score and downs and all that good That's stuff. True. I'm used to a little radio work. So, 232 <laughs> remaining here in quarter number one, three to nothing, friends. Gets defense get to stop, and now the offense back out onto the field. Tattersall in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. This time he'll fake it. Now he'll drop back and throw to the sideline. He has his man who makes the catch at the 50. Down the sideline, going for six. And friends, did he oh, stop him? He did. Down. <laughs> down at the one. A half yard line. Now we saw a fumble in the last drive, so you yeah. know that could be really important. Well, he was rumbling, bumbling, and stumbling <laughs> down that sideline, Nick. I was thinking the exact same thing, Mike, man. Woo. That was 34. That's Ishmael a 65-yard pass, by Dobson. the way. Dobson. Most Ishmael of it run. Dobson. <laughs> about a 10-yard pass, about 55 yards on the run. And Nick, he came up that short. But a good job by Howard to chase that one down, not giving up on the play. Five yards. 65 yards on the catch and run for Cattersall to Dotson. Now they'll turn, give up the middle. McKenzie trying to lower his shoulder and into the end zone for six. And Friends up nine to nothing, an extra point away from going up 10 to nothing here in the opening quarter. So no, no, uh, no snap on, I mean, no, no. Long snap on that one, just under center that time. They weren't going to take any chances. A one-yard touchdown run for McKenzie. You said at that time they left Tattersall for the first time all game up under center. He took the snap, gave it away, and now Christian Eddie Walker's extra point is up and through. And just like that, 10 to nothing, two minutes remaining here in quarter number one. Friends on top of Howard here on the road. The battle of number one, Friends versus number two, Howard. And guys, what have you seen from friends on the first two drives? The defense also coming up with a big stop there just a few moments ago. There's a lot of Robbie Tattersall. <laughs> and, uh, but hey, uh, they opened it up. We said those runs could open up the pass, the little, a little play action pass, and uh, it picked them up almost, almost a touchdown. All but one yard, everything but the finish, Nick, and then McKenzie got it. Boy, Jay's working hard in there, isn't he? <laughs> Again, scoreboard giving us some trouble. 158, 10 to nothing here at Abyssinio Stadium. And Wilmington Friends set to kick this one away. And I think Christian Nutty Walker's got a soccer game tomorrow for the Quakers. <laughs> Double duty. You yep. gotta love that. He's not the only one in the state playing both of those sports. So the kick is up. And it's gonna hit the end zone. So a touchback and now here comes RJ Matthews and company out for drive number two. Yeah, 158 to go here in the first. A quick drive by the Quakers. And it's it's always something at 302 Sports, that's for sure. RJ Matthews, two of three for 40 yards on that drive, connected on his first pass. Went for 40 yards, missed his next two, and then went for it on fourth down. But this Howard offense has a lot of playmaking ability. Jamal Johnson, Kevin Ford, Keshawn Watson, Al Zion Triplett, all can make plays. They'll snap it now, they'll run speed option to the left. Matthews pitches it to Triplett and it's gonna be a TFL for friends. And I think that was number 30, Paul Beardell in there to make the stop. Just another thing, Nick here, Howard for the next minute 40, looking right into the sun. That might make passing a little bit tougher until they get to flip the sides. That sun is definitely in a weird spot. We were getting crushed by it a little while ago. So second and 11 after the one yard loss on first down. Kelly, the lone receiver to the bottom of the screen. Here comes motion as Damian Ross who settles in the slot. Matthews in the gun, triplet to his left. He'll look now to throw, he'll fire to Damian Ross who unable to make the catch out in the flat. But right on him. Right there was McKenzie. 
I believe it. And the thing about the Quakers here, guys, is a lot of those players play both sides of the football. They're going to be playing offense and defense. And actually, when you look over at Howard, it's sort of similar. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, the two of the smaller rosters in the 2A class, but, man, their talent is uh, – very good on both teams, so like you said, they can play both ways and be very good at multi-position. Here comes motion. This time they'll run jet sweep. Now they'll reverse it to Kelly around the other side. Looking for somewhere to run. Flags come flying, but great containment by the Quakers. Colin Heron, the senior, was out there with a host of other white jerseys, and they were ready for the reverse that time. And that one going to be... If it stands, only good for a few yards. We'll await the call here with one minute remaining in quarter number one. It's a holding on, Howard. And it's going to go against the Wildcats. Now, I was would you decline that penalty, That's Jeff? what I was just thinking. Do you decline it? And, you know, Howard, with the minute left, they're going to have to punt with the sun in their face. So and they as, did. A, as a kicker, I mean, as a returner, it's better for you because you're not looking into that sun. Yeah, definitely. They made it fourth down in 11, about, uh, about 10 and a half, so no surprise there. So we'll see the punt unit, and the punter is R.J. Matthews. They can do different <laughs> things off of that. Yeah, I think they're going to be punting this time, but we'll see. And you mentioned Jay. He's staring right into the sun. So ball right now is sitting right at the 20. And Matthews sitting at his own six-yard line, and there it is, oh! and he's dropped in the backfield. Tattersall. A big <laughs> TFL for Rob Tattersall, and a turnover on down. That's a, that's a top, top play, play tackle. Candidate right there. Oh, my. Rob Tattersall breaks through that line, and there was no chance. That's a gutsy call by Coach Ritter, but did not fool uh, one of the <laughs> smartest players in the state in Tattersall. Wow. And, wow. That's a decleater. That's yeah. a decleater. You know, R.J. Matthews has so, so much escapability, but Tattersall was, was all over him, man, like butter on toast, and uh, got to him. And now they're in good business, good business here with uh, 42 seconds to go. And I imagine that number 17, he might be feeling it right now. First and 10 from the 12. His friends trying to score on three straight possessions. They'll roll Tattersall out. He'll look to throw. Fire in the corner, and that pass is intercepted. It is. And that is going to be picked off near the goal line by Kevin Ford, who made the diving interception. And that's going to be a huge play for Howard. A complete momentum had shifted to Wilmington Friends after that stop. And then that one gives Howard a little momentum Friends back. was going for the juggernaut there with the sun <laughs> in, their, in their back. They're going to try to score him and take a 17-point lead. Big, big change of events there. Great job by uh, Howard getting the, the ball back. They started their own six-yard line. Six, yeah. Kevin Ford's second interception of the season, I'm still, and that is an absolute huge one. Yeah, I'm still sore from that Tattersall tackle. <laughs> As Friends was going to look to punch it in and take a three-possession lead. All I know lead. is I'm glad we're in here and not on the field uh, lining up opposite of, of number 17 for Friends. R.J. Matthews will play action. He'll pump fake, look to throw. Gets out of the pocket, cuts down the middle of the field. And he'll pick up a few yards on the first down scramble. You fooled me. <laughs> Give him five. That's probably going to do it for the quarter. And That's that, a good opening quarter for the Quakers. Sorry to cut you off, Nick. Nah, sometimes you with the, <laughs> oh. the three-man boost. Yeah. And that it should be the last play. Three, two, and one. That'll do it for quarter number one here in Abyssinio Stadium. Wilmington Friends leads 10 to nothing. A McKenzie touchdown run and a Christian Eddie Walker field goal. Howard offense will start another drive after the interception when we come back right here on Delaware Live Sports. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news, free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard, our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. 
Delaware Live. Our state, our news, our home. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned, community-based news. Free to every reader. Back live from Abyssinio Stadium, Nick Alessandrini alongside Jason Winchell, Mike Lang. Hey, Nick, while we have a second. Yeah. Uh, last night at Wilmington Charter, one of our colleagues, Bill Bretzker from Delaware Online and News Journal, had uh, some kind of seizure on the sideline. Bill apparently is doing well. We want to wish him the best of luck and can't wait to see you back on the sidelines, Bill. It's a, you know, we are competitors, but it's a small community. We're also friends. And, uh, our best to Bill Bretzker and his family. Yeah, he does great work as well. Uh, absolutely. We all, you know, speedy recovery, like Mike said. Second down for Howard here, deep in their own territory. Matthews drops back, fires across the middle, has its man. It's Damian Ross who makes the catch at the 20. Going to dive forward, pick up a few extra. And the Quakers needed three or four players to bring him down. That, that's the extra effort of Ross there. Uh, but let's see if that interception can play key here. You know, down 10 nothing. Friends about to punch it in. You know, possibly go up three scores on you and, uh, you know, you get the pick and now, you know, key first down and, and see if they can get this ball moving with uh, here in the second quarter. Damian Ross, seven catches, 108 yards, four touchdowns on the year. That is his first today. And they broke the huddle with 12 players, an extra one there for the Howard Wildcats. This should be a penalty against the offense. That's twice in the half already they've had not 11 players out there. And Matthews looks kind of frustrated and, and he... Yeah, you're right, Mike. The second time there's been a miscommunication with personnel for the Howard offense here. 11.33, clock will run now in the second quarter. Friends leading 10 to nothing. And now a quads look to the top of the screen. One lone receiver to the bottom. The lone receiver is Jamal Johnson. He loves to go to the backside. We'll see what he does here. Matthews alone in the gun. They'll fake the screen. He'll look to run. Trying to get now to the near sideline, and there are a ton of Quakers there, led by Dobson, who pushes him out for a couple yard loss, and that might go down as a sack for number 84. And Matthew's a little slow to get up, and that's one that, thing you do not want to see. No, I think that's more frustration than anything else from R.J. Matthews. Yeah. But we certainly hope he's all. He looks physically, he looks fine. So. That was just great defense there yeah, by the Quakers. Definitely. Uh, he was looking. It was. I think it was a, a design run from the start after the fake pass. Mm -hmm. and there was draw. just nowhere for him to run, and then he tried to bounce it outside, and there was three more Quakers waiting for him out there. Yeah, Jay, he looked for the run as soon as he got that ball. So Matthews back in the gun here. Two receivers to the top, to the bottom, double slot. Matthews rolling to the right. They'll get him out of the pocket. Fires to the sideline, has his man. Nice throw. Not an easy one to the far sideline. Ball into the hands of his number one go-to guy, and that's number 10, Jamal Johnson. He makes the catch short gain, though, give him about six. I think we got a, you know, a key third down play here for Howard. You know, they did pick up the one first down, but you want to try and sustain this drive down 10-0. Uh, here we go, third and nine for Howard, 11.04. Ball at the 25. Motion to form trips to the bottom of the screen. They'll take the snap, they'll get him out of the pocket again. Matthews gonna fire, looking for Jamal Johnson, one on one, and he high points it with a huge catch at the 42. Yeah, that, uh, that is a great job. And like you said, Nick, he high pointed the ball. What great coverage there. I mean, that is just a outstanding catch. We, he likes to attack that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the back side. He did there. That one, good for 32. That's good math there, Nick. I was just doing it in my head, and he beat me to it. I like what, Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. What I like, the, the coverage is right there. It was a battle, and it, they both looked like they tried to fight for the ball, and uh, you know, the receiver comes down with it. But that, that's a great one-on-one -on -one battle. I like to see the rest of the day. Matthews will turn and pitch it now, and he's going to be wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage as that time they tried to pitch it and get into the hands of Amir Madri, the freshman, and he is wrapped up for a tackle for loss. That was uh, Hudson's Watkins on the tackle, number nine. Came from the this end, our, our side of the field, and, and chased down 
the running back over uh, on the other side of the line, of on the other side of the uh, offensive line. So good job by Hudson. No gain on the first down play. So second down and 10 now for the Wildcats. 10 minutes remaining here in the first half. A 10 to nothing lead for Wilmington Friends. First and 10 now from the Friends 42, 43, excuse me. Quakers doing a good job against the run, Nick, but Howard has hit a couple big pass plays. Under center this time is Matthews. Pryor in motion, they'll turn, fake the handoff, and then fake another. Play action, looking for Damian Ross down the middle of the field. He's got it for a touchdown, 42 yards through the air. R.J. Matthews to Damian Ross. I'll tell you what, he throws a great ball there, Nick almost 50 yards in the air and drops it right into the receiver's hands. What a play, what an answer. And I'll tell you what, it looked like Fred's was going in to make it 17-0, the interception, and Howard comes right back with the answer, and we got ourselves a ball game here. That's today. a 94-yard drive, Jay, and a heck of a final play there, top play candidate for sure. As you mentioned, he dropped that right into Ross. He went up and made the play over the receiver, over the defender. Now they'll go for two. R.J. Matthews has completed his last four passes for 95 yards and a touchdown. And now a chance. That's the one difference with Howard. They will go for two almost yep. after every score. Triplet sits to the right of Matthews. They'll fake it to him. Matthews going to have the dual opportunity. He flips it up. And it's good, and it's converted. Had the chance to run or throw. He decided just a little pitch pass to Damian Ross, who has both catches, both of them scoring points here on the last two. I guess he was not past the line of no, scrimmage. No, he was not. When it, he was, tossed it, that. it was close, Mike. I was thinking the same thing. I was looking for the laundry. But that, like Nick said, that's a dual threat. I think even if he runs there, Nick, he's probably going to get in. Yeah, I thought so. I thought he should have run had, in there. He had wide open spaces in front of him. What are you doing? I thought maybe he was celebrating a little early, but hey, I liked I liked the Patrick Mahomes little flip play there, little style points yeah. that time for <laughs> R.J. Matthews. He has now his 14th touchdown through the air. I feel sorry for Nick in here. He's on his uh, knees, but uh, man, we we're, no chairs it's, needed. It's right? worth it's worth it for a game like this <laughs> here to, uh, today. What a good one, R.J. Matthews turning it on there. They get eight on that possession, and now we've got a 10-8 ball game with 9:30. Remaining. Tells you, we said at the time that interception could be a momentum changer, and it was. And that, you know, Howard answers was up. But I'll tell you what, does Matthews throw the best ball, one of the best balls in the state? I mean, that was unbelievable. Now they'll kick it off. It's a short one, going to be brought back by the Quakers. Some room to run, but tripped up. That time for the Quakers was Jackson Black. I think we have a player down that he flipped right into one of his teammates. And you see, I can't see the number hobbling just a little bit. Number 80 is that for friends coming up a little slow. And how about that again? Going to get to the sideline on the toughness there from the Quakers. So now we'll get a chance once again to check out Rob Tattersall and the Quaker offense. 9.25 remaining in half number one. A 10 to 8 ball game in a battle of undefeateds here today. First and 10, Quakers will begin this drive at the 31. Tattersall in the gun. He'll take it and follow his blockers. Power to the right side. And runs right into the line of scrimmage. A good push by that Howard defensive front. And that's going to be three yards on the carry from Tattersall. You know, in, in pregame, we mentioned that these are probably two of the better quarterbacks in this 2A, which is loaded with quarterbacks. And they are both putting on a show here in the first half, Nick. Yeah, Jay, you mentioned uh, these two guys, McKeevis Rogers from McCain's having an outstanding season. Yeah. Uh, Archmere. Archmere, Chris Albaro. Albaro, of course. Uh, B.J. Aline from DMA. Uh, Chase Padalano from St. Mark's. Yeah, it's kind of fortunate in the 2A level to see this kind of talent. And Truman aware to over a care of also having a good sophomore season. And once again, quarterback power. Tattersall looking to make something happen, but he runs right into that Howard defensive line again and that time I believe in to make the play is Christian Pope once again and he's going to be a name you're going to hear often tonight there at that defensive tackle position 32 tackles now and seven sacks on the year for big number 59. Hey, he's made a couple big plays in this game already you know uh, like you said we saw him it's it's senior day here yes he was honored before the game and uh, he's having a good start to this one and a great season 
so far. This is a big play here. Beardell heads to the sideline, third and seven now, under eight minutes to go in half number one. We should put uh, the winner of this game has a good chance to win the District 2 regular season. They'll throw it on third down. Tattersall, one-on-one -on -one coverage, looking down the sideline and had a man. There the it flags is. come flying. Yeah, I was waiting for it. it so Watkins looked around Jay immediately. And Awatkis did, Zawatkis did have a step on him, and that ball actually looked like maybe it almost still could have been caught, yeah. but Zawatkis again trying to draw the MC. flag, and he did so. I'll tell you what, the arms on both these quarterbacks are amazing. That was another long, long throw up. It was a, you know, I was waiting for the flag because it was a lot of hand-on-hand -hand contact, and yeah, it could have it, it went either way, uh, but I think the, the, the right call was made, is, uh, and uh, it will, remember, in high school, it's not an automatic first down, but it's a 15-yard penalty, and, and they only needed uh, eight or nine, so it's a first down. So what was third and seven becomes a new set of downs. Big time play there for the Quakers. And now they'll have a new set here at the 44-yard line. And once again, we'll see trips to the bottom of the screen. Zad Zawadkis now at the bottom. Tattersall back in the shotgun on first and 10. Speed option to the left side. Tattersall not going to pitch. He'll tuck it and run. Gets above midfield and into Howard territory. Gives him about seven on the carry. He's got to be closing in on almost 100 yards here. They, they moved him back to the 49. And they moved him back. So that's going to be good for about six yards, I'd say. Close just yes. inside of midfield at the Friends 49. So now Tattersall, 14 carries for 70 yards as they've held him relatively in check on the last four carries. He's got nine on the last four. I was gonna say they're doing a better job. There's Big Dobson in the slot now to the bottom of the screen. Motion to form trips. Tattersall in the gun on second and six. Quarterback power to the right. He has a hole and Tattersall gets through it. And into Howard territory for first down yardage. He's dragged down at the 38. I mean, it, it's enough that you see the, the size of this Quaker line, and then you have Tattersall. I mean, Six five. <laughs> it's just not fun. I, 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 I think there was a flag on Nick, and I think it's coming back. I never saw the flag on the play. I didn't see it either. Apologize oh, to all the viewers at home. There uh, it is, Jay, inside yep. the circle there. And that's why it blends in with the yellow, but yeah. it does. That is going to negate the 13-yard carry for Robbie Tattersall. And that's going to back up the Quakers here. So a, a penalty that gave them a new set of downs on the pass interference against Howard. And this time, one going to back them up. Of course, Jay, a spot foul in high school. Sometimes it seems right. Sometimes it just doesn't seem right. I've seen him called in the way in the backfield. Ends up being a 30-yard penalty. Yeah, the, you know, we're used to, I think a lot of us are used to the NFL in, in college where I think it's 10 yards uh, from the previous spot. Uh, previous line of scrimmage, but like you said, it's a spot foul, and that was a couple yards down the field, so. Second and 14 now for Friends. First down marker sitting at the Howard 47, and now we have some whistles and maybe a timeout on the field, and the Quakers will take their first timeout here Coach, of the first half. Coach Tattersall saw something he didn't like and calls a timeout here, and we'll see what he can do, and like you said, this is a big, you know, this is a, game has changed a couple times the momentum for uh, it's been there for both teams you know friends is looking for an answer Howard's now back within two you, and then you get you look like you have a big first down you get called for a holding penalty puts you in second 15 I like this call by the coach let's make sure you have the right play and get yourself in a good third down position if you can't pick up the first down clock stopped here at 625 second quarter 10 to 8 friends jumped on the board first with a field goal and then defense three and out got the ball back led to a McKenzie one yard touchdown run and then Howard able to respond on their last possession RJ Matthews completing four passes on the drive for 90 yards and a touchdown that, that's an average of 22 and a half yards per uh, per pass and the last one was what the touchdown pass was 45 yards yeah, 42 yeah. 42 so second and long for the Quakers in their own territory. Straight drop back for Tattersall. Great protection by the offensive line. He'll take a shot to Zawadkis, and he has the catch at the 20 and drag down inside the 15. It is an air raid from both <laughs> teams here today. A huge chunk through the air from Tattersall to Zawadkis. That ball was on the 39, Nick. And, uh, my quick math. Where are they? On the 15. 
11 and 3. That's a 46 yard pass. Yeah, they're just, uh, I'll tell you what, like Nick said, both quarterbacks are putting on a show here today. And I'll tell you what, uh, Nick Holliday's going to be having uh, some fun cutting up the plays of the week from this game alone already here in the first half. Again, unofficial stats. Tattersall had an interception and an incompletion, but the other two passes are both completions for 111 yards. First and 10 for the Quakers, under six minutes to play in half number one. They're just inside the 15. Tattersall, quarterback power, has a hole, gets through it, and he's gonna be dragged down inside the five. First and goal, friends. I'll tell you what, since the timeout, uh, he, co the coach has all call up two nice plays, and you know, go back to that pass play. Nick, you said it during the, the on air. He had plenty of time to throw the ball. And it was great coverage and a, a, a well-placed ball. But I think both lines are doing a good job of protecting these quarterbacks early in this one. So first and goal from the four for Wilmington friends. Here, Dallin McKenzie in the backfield with Tattersall, who's under center, I believe. Is it quarterback sneak? Tattersall trying to get in. <laughs> And he's going to be stopped at, what do you know, the one-yard line. That's happened to him a few times tonight. Looked like Australian was football yeah, out was, there. I was, I was, uh, you heard a fan. Uh, and I uh, believe that was Tattersall in a quarterback sneak. I think you're right. He was just using his big body and the big body of his lineman. And you heard someone play through the whistle. I mean, they, the whistle wasn't blowing because the pile was still moving forward. 444, clock continues to run. And that's the thing, friends. You know, an old school type of offense as Tattersall will head to the sideline, get the call, you know, come back out. They take their time. Howard more of an up-tempo. Well, we saw that in the opening drive that yeah. took almost seven and a half minutes that uh, resulted in just three points. But Tattersall under center, first and goal from the four. They'll hand back to McKenzie, and he is in. Andrew McKenzie punches it in from four yards out. A second touchdown on the ground for him. And Friends extends the lead 16 to 8, awaiting the extra point try. Yeah, this is uh that's a good answer by the Quakers team. Uh, you know, they they get the ball and uh, you know they went right down the field again and don't waste any time. No. McKenzie's last two carries, guys, have gone for touchdowns. Punched one in from a yard out earlier, that one from three yards out. Two carries, two scores. That's efficient for Andrew McKenzie. Christian Eddie Walker knocks through the extra point. And we've got a 16 to 8 ball game. 420 Seven, remaining. 17, excuse me, 17 to 8 ball two, game. That's, that extra point's huge because we know Howard likes to go for two. That makes it a two score game. And again, thanks for joining us on your Friday evening broadcast, Nick Alessandrini alongside Jason Winchell it's dry, and it's Mike a, Lang. It's a drive time game, too, with the it 5 o'clock right. uh, rush hour. Have us on in your car. Just game. listen. Don't have to watch. No. <laughs> Nick, just a comment for you on YouTube. Nice play-by-play. -play. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Or it's lady. a man. It is a man, yeah. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, miss. Missy. He is, uh, he's one of the best. And we, we have three of the best football play-by-play -play guys in the business, and, you know, that's and, good. and they're all working tonight. Yeah. We, have the, <laughs> we have the best all-around crews here at Delaware Live Sports. We are underway late. Ooh, that that was one caught at the one-yard line. Going to try to make something happen as Kevin Ford gets up outside the 20. He'll be brought down around the 23. So, Back-to-back -back weeks where we've seen these uh, kickers t kick the ball to the end zone makes a difference there. I mean, it was the one-yard line. He's like, oh, man, I wish I had that one just a one-yard further. I'm wondering if he if he's trying to keep it out of the end zone, maybe just to get him to run it back. But Howard's so dangerous on that run back. Of course, now friends, and this won't be a factor much longer. They were looking into the sun, but Shadow's about stretching across the field, so... So here come the Howard Wildcats just outside their own 20. First and 10 with 4.13 to work with. Matthews under center will hand it off on first down. Triplet dragged down at the line of scrimmage, maybe for a loss. And again, there he is. A few plays already. Colin Heron able to bring him down. Up, uh, you know, uh, this Friends defense up front is doing a good job against the Howard running game. Uh, Howard's big plays have come through the air here uh, so far in the first half. 
And a couple of them on play action as well. Uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Howard gets the ball to start the second they half. They do, right? yep. so correct. This could be a, a good drive here the last 340, get some kind of score, and then you know go get the ball to start the second half. Matthews in the shotgun. Some motion to the right. Play action, he's gonna look to throw, looking deep again, has a man down the sideline. That ball is intercepted! Going up and making a play on it was Ryan Tattersall. The Tattersalls have come to play here today. What a great interception. That time, double coverage. Matthew still threw a good ball, but Tattersall is right there to pick it off. I believe looking either for Ross on the outside or his go-to Jamal Johnson, and he had one-on-one -on -one coverage with the corner. The safety came over over the top for some extra help, but unneeded, Tattersall, one-on-one, -on -one, goes up and gets the interception. That was and a, a big play. Great pick. I mean, he went up and kept his concentration and held onto the ball as he fell down. Matthews' first interception today, just his second pick on the season. Friends offense back out on the field with 321 to go here in half number one. Tattersall in the shotgun, first and 10 from the 42. They'll put it on the ground. It's Tattersall. Lowers his shoulder, picks up about two or three. So second and seven coming, 3-12 and ticket. The friends with two timeouts here to work with in the last three minutes of half number one. They used uh, one couple series ago. Yeah, and that big second and 15, which turned into that 49-yard right. pass. So, so obviously they, uh, the Tattersall coaches know what they're doing when it comes to using timeouts. And uh, Jay, they're in business here on the 45-yard line. Second and seven, clock is running, and they're, again, not being particularly quick about it here. <laughs> so 2.36, it'll run. Tattersall going to follow his blockers this time around the left side. And he'll pick up another decent chunk there, probably good for three or four. And now third and short, third and very manageable coming up here for the Quakers. Yeah, as a coach, you will take this third and, and you know, short every time, you know. And uh, Quakers' offense is mixing in the, the runs in the past, but it's been a lot of Tattersall. And again, Howard not going to use any of their timeouts here. They They've got all three, I believe. Right, and maybe if they get, get a stop here on a third down run and play, maybe they stop it. Uh, but, you know, they get the ball to start the second half. I think their main concern is stopping friends. Don't let them get in the end zone here. Third and four. 150 and ticking here in the first half. Ball sitting on the friend side of the 50. And the coaches want an offside call on Howard there, Nick. No calls, no forthcoming. Tattersall is wrapped up. A very short gain on that carry. Good for about a yard. In on the tackle was Xavier DeLeon, the sophomore. There's a timeout. Yeah, I like that by Howard. You Absolutely. Know, take a chance. Uh, you know, you force them into, I, I would assume a punt here, but I don't want to assume anything with these two coaches. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if, if you, you know, get the ball back here, maybe you get a, a return, a decent return. And, you know, you, like I said, they get the ball to start the second half. So if they could get any points, they would take it. Clock stopped, as you said, at 136 here in the second quarter. So first half winding down here at Abyssinio Stadium, Nick Alessandrini, Jason Winchell, and Mike Lang. This Nick, is a good one. How's that seat? It's good, <laughs> you know, you, you got to make do. Yeah, you do. You know, hey, you know, know what, action-packed house up here today. We're able to be here. Not everybody's allowed into the stadium. We're yep. happy to be here to bring Absolutely. in the game. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, thanks to Howard for and, and to the Slazianan people for uh, hooking us up this week. It was, you know, we were able to, to get over here and do this game and bring the game to the people who couldn't be here. Absolutely, and that's our goal. And I, I think they're going to go for it here. So it looks like. Fourth and three, or Tattersall. Just try to draw them offside. Under center, need to get to the Howard 48. And, and they gave out. it a shot. Yeah, try to draw them. Good discipline by Howard on the defensive side. Timeout, friends. Their second timeout of the first half. So Howard will have two left. Friends has one left. You see Tattersall dropping back now. He's also the punter, by the way. And uh, <laughs> Oh, you don't say. <laughs> What does he, what doesn't he do? He's not their place kicker, <laughs> and they've got a good one as well. There, that's why. That's the only reason. He no. probably could be. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Eddie Walker again, one of the good ones here in the state of Delaware. Tattersall though, back to punt this one away for the Quakers. So back to receive two Wildcats. It's tough to see those blue numbers on the black jerseys. You know, I'm just saying, Kevin Ford is definitely back there. 
as well as Amir Madri. So Tattersall will get it back. Ford going to come up, wave for the fair catch, and he'll make it just inside the 20-yard line. So here we go, guys, a 129 to work with for the Howard offense, trailing 17 to 8. They're at their own 20. They have the big, big play capability. We've seen it. We've talked about it. It would be huge if they're able to put some points on the board here, but not an easy task against this friend's defense. No, it, uh, you know it is, and, and but you know we've seen Howard is capable of the big plays. Uh, but what I like about that punt, the hang time, Nick. There is no way uh, you, you could set up a return because that ball was in the air for it seemed like forever, and forced a fair catch. Robert Kelly to the top of the screen, trips to the top for Howard. Robert Kelly will now reverse field to the near side. Jamal Johnson and Damian Ross, the two receivers to the top of the screen. Matthews in the shotgun on first and 10. Here comes the pressure. He'll get rid of it, looking for Jamal Johnson. He has a step on the defender and just out of his reach as he leaped at the 40. Had a step on the secondary of the Quakers as he takes a little push-up there on say, the way he's up. doing push-ups. But again, <laughs> Matthews putting that one in a great spot, just out through him, or over through him, excuse me, by just a tad. But you can see Howard trying to get behind the secondary of the Quakers. Yeah, and it, I like the play call there. Be aggressive, you know. Uh, I know there's a minute 22 left, but you complete that pass, and you know. But uh, he throws the ball so far. And <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, I can see why he's uh, given some offers. Second and 10, they took about nine seconds for that play. 122 remaining here in half number one. Two backs now for Howard, Matthews under center. He'll drop straight back, pump fake, here comes the pressure, he'll get rid of it. And gonna throw that one as they tried to set up the wide receiver screen into the ground. Enough your friends, you're starting to think here, what are they gonna do in third and 10? Are they gonna run the ball and run clock? Or are they gonna try another pass? You gotta think they're gonna go for another pass here. Now you start thinking, are they gonna, are they gonna go for a fourth down from their own territory? That one time out friends does to stop the clock, so. The wheels, are, at least my wheels are turning. I'm exactly. sure the Tattersalls are. And I'm sure they are they're, as they're well. They're 10 steps ahead of me, I'm sure. So they, uh, they're thinking about this all the time. Minute 18 still remaining here in half number one. 17 to eight in favor of the Quakers. So third and 10 for Howard here. They'll go double slot for Matthews. Here comes the pressure again. He'll escape out of the pocket. As he backpedals toward the sideline, fires across his body and intercepted yet again. This time, Jason Hughes brings it in for the INT. Yeah, I, they I, saved the timeout, Jay. Go ahead. I, I, I know uh, he's trying to make a play there, but I think the best throw would have been a throw out of bounds. He's running left. Yep. He's a righty thrown back across his body, not across his body, away from his body like that. It, that's a tough play. That's a tough play for... Anybody. Very and, tough play. And we should mention, you know, minute nine. Like, That's and, a lot of time. But they have a, a place kicker that I think can kick it from 40 Absolutely. plus easily. Oh, sure he can. Yeah. Um, that changes everything. It changes everything. You can put three more points up on the board here. Uh, you know, I think they'll try and go for seven. Absolutely. But they yeah. have a timeout. Yep. Again, RJ Matthews, one interception coming in. He's got two tonight. Doubling up what he did on the season so far through six games. Tattersall, first and 10, quarterback draw. He's got space to run inside the 20. Goes Rob Tattersall, a gain of about 17. And that'll stop the clock till they get the chains moved. So the Quakers have a chance to get up and get set and not have to use that timeout. Ball spotted just outside the 20 after the 17-yard carry. And I think that gets them in field goal range Absolutely. at least. You're, you're, I, I agree with you, Jay. Tatters all back in the gun. 53 seconds in ticking for friends to work with. Straight drop back. Another a lot of time for Tattersall. Throws over the middle. How'd he do that? And almost had his intended <laughs> target as players ran I into each other say. on the crossing route. And we have a that was Zawadkiss who was open as he down. got to the other side of sorry, the end zone. Sorry, the player down in the end zone. And it's going to be number a member seven. of the secondary for Howard. Number seven? That's number seven for the Wildcats. That's Kadero Barrett, a starter in the secondary. Just looking at that play, Nick, for Howard. Tattersall throws it. There's a, a defensive player coming across the field. Somehow missed him and then almost got to his receiver. And uh, Barrett was right there and missed him too. Uh, just uh, incomplete. There, there was so much congestion. It looked like I-95 at rush hour. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was, uh, like you said, I don't know how the ball even got <laughs> through it, all those uh, hands and bodies, but it did. And uh, I like that. Uh, you, I said you're in field goal range. Why not take some shots at the end zone? 
uh, here if you already feel like you're going to get three points out of it. Absolutely. Barrett, again, big part of that secondary. Interception on the air, 13 tackles for the senior here on senior night. As he was honored before the game, he's great that you're able, he's able to get up and walk off under his own power. He loved to see that. But now back here to the game on the field. 45 seconds to work with for the Quakers. There's Coach Dan Ritter. Does a great job at Howard. Great job, absolutely. Uh, Phenomenal job. A couple job. of state championships recently. And, uh, and Nick, he wears shorts all the time, and I can respect <laughs> that. Yeah, that's right. You, it's something you guys have in common. There's a, there's Dan and I are like this. <laughs> so here we go. 45 seconds, 17 to 8. Second and 10 after the incompletion for the Quakers. That's getting a little chilly out here, though. <laughs> Tattersall in the shotgun. He'll look to throw, trying to run it and tuck it after the pressure, but he's going to be dropped in the backfield. And that is number eight coming up with the play. That's Amir Madri and the freshman making some plays here tonight. Friends not using that timeout, Nick, is there going to get up and... 27 seconds, here comes the bootleg. They'll roll Tattersall out, he'll fire to the sideline, has his man, I believe that's Jackson Black who made the catch. We'll have to double check it. He may have and gotten a first Zawakis. down. I think Actually, he got a first Zawakis. down there, Nick. That's gonna be a gain of 13 then. That's a first down. Nope, they're gonna mark him just oh, short. just short. So gain of 12 on the completion. Nope, they are moving the chains. So the clock stops. Clock should be st oh, no, they, they did stop it. They the, did stop it. Okay. They moved the chains. And Tattersall spikes. It looks a little frustrated on that spike. They still have uh, one timeout, I believe. Yeah, right, they, Mike? they can. Yeah, they do have a timeout. They can probably run one play. At least one play yep. with the timeout. They throw a pass. They can throw two passes into yep. the end zone. I think they can get two plays and still get the kickoff here. Yeah, Depends we'll on see. how much time they do. They spend running around the backfield. Yeah, we'll see what they decide to go with here. Last time they were deep into the red zone, they decided to throw it on first down. There's it was an interception. There's but some again, big ahead, district games today. Um, I just want to yeah. uh, Newark and McCain. Newark three and one in District One, and McCain two for two, two and two, uh, playing tonight at six o'clock. So that that's a huge playoff implication game down there at, at McCain tonight. Thirteen seconds for friends to work with. Tattersall rolling out of the gun, trying to get to the edge. He'll tuck it now and try to run, and he'll just run out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. As now he gets inside the ten. That took, play took a lot of time. So do they have enough time to run well, another play, or do you bring? If I'm them, I I, I can't. Do you bring Christian Eddie Walker out now? I was thinking the same thing as Nick. That play took six seconds. So if you take another play with, you know, you of uh, six or seven seconds, you're close. Yeah, you 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 run. You got to tell Tattersall, take if you're gonna do it, do a quick hitter. And uh oh. That's right, they got the third down yeah. down on the field. That's well, not that, right, it's that second is, down. That, no, it's correct because they spiked oh, the ball in first that's down right. to Good stop call, the clock. Jason. So the, the scoreboard is incorrect. Trips to the top of the screen now for Fred. They're going to go one-on-one -on -one for Dobson in the end zone. That ball is deflected. Great play on it there from the cornerback position for Howard. That's a great And that's Robert oh, Kelly, yeah. the talented receiver, doing it on defense. I like the, the look by friends there. Uh, I, you know, that's a smart play by your quarterback. You tell him you have seven seconds, throw that ball. Uh, you know, now you got two seconds left to kick that, that field goal uh, right before the half and here. Jay, this is this is 27 yards, so this is, you know, nothing's a gimme. But it's a, it's a he makes these in his sleep. 27-yard field goal attempt coming up for the senior, Christian Eddie Walker. Snap, hold, kick is up. And it is through, and that is how the first half comes to a close. Wilmington friends jumping on the board first and last here as we end the half. They take a 20 to eight lead into the locker room. Howard will get the ball to start the second half, but guys, what did you see in the first half? I saw a lot of Robbie Tattersall uh, throwing. He started with the runs, then he got into the throws, and he made a, a heck of a tackle back there on R.J. Matthews. He, the, he, he's the straw that stirs this drink, and uh, you know what? This is a really good team. Jason, if there's one team that could come back on you pretty quick, it's the Howard Wildcats, 20 to eight. And that defense is gonna have to be stout in the second half for the Quakers to maintain that lead. Yeah, and what I like was they got the turnover there right before the half to get the, the extra three points. Now you have that, you know, that comfortable uh, uh, 12 point lead instead of uh, a 10 point lead. But, uh, you know, a difference of, of a kicker makes, you know, you get in field goal position, you can make that uh, play. 
Well, that'll take us to the break. 20 to eight, friends leading Howard right here on Delaware Live Sports. When we come back, we'll have third quarter action. We'll get you these first half stats. And then again, right back here for number one versus number two here on Friday evening. Enjoy the half. We'll be back. Friends leading Howard, 20 to eight. <laughs> I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We love Ferris. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation and five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 Two two three nine four eight two two. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the villages of Five Points open seven days a week. Best happy hour around. See you soon. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. 
At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSB.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. How you doing? My name is Mike Cassidy. I'm the founder and president of Cassidy Painting. I started back in 1984, incorporated in 1986. I never had the word no in my vocabulary. Uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes. Whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we've really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. And Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. We deal with everything from epoxy floors to painting buildings to uh, spray foam insulation, spray fireproofing. If it deals with a coating, we can handle it. So when our customers call and they're under the gun and they know the need to get a job done, they know who to call because we perform. We've always been performed. We've never been replaced out of 37 years of business. For any of your painting needs, we can handle it. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges. BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution, free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. 
Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Soil Concepts. Today we're at Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Come check us out. Located in the Rehoboth Gateway next to Blue Coast Rehoboth, Thompson Island will follow the Soil tradition of serving beautiful, simple food that will pair perfectly with our fresh homemade beer. Thompson Island is a perfect place to have dinner with your family, enjoy happy hour with friends at the bar, or spend a day in the beer garden playing bocce ball and ping pong. Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, open seven days a week. See you soon. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution, we are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine list, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you soon. Wraps, signs, banners, and promotional items that can help your business stand out from the rest. Looking for an excellent way to convey a professional image? Customized promotional products are the perfect way to target new customers, increase employee retention, and boost your brand awareness. Let the professionals at Cassidy Graphics bring your advertising ideas to life. Give them a call today at 302-326-2412. Again, that number is 302-326-2412. Again, Casty Graphics brings your advertising ideas to life. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all this seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust. Back live from Abyssinio Stadium, Nick Alcidrini alongside Jason Winchell and Mike Lang. It's Delaware Live Sports Friday Evening Edition with a number one versus number two battle of undefeated matchup between number one Wilmington Friends and number two the Howard Wildcats. Guys, we had a very eventful first half, a very close first half. The Quakers, they struck first. They struck at the end of the first half as well. They lead 20 to eight, and a big part of that is behind number 17 in white, Robbie Tattersall. 
Yeah, the Quakers had 238 total yards of offense, uh, 115 on the ground, 123 in the air. And what was that? About 230 of it was Tattersall, Nick? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So, you know, he, he was everything in that first half. And, uh, you know, they key in that offensive thing. And Howard, they had 137 yards through the air, but only six on the ground, which I think was the huge difference in the first half. They could not get that ground game going at all. And Nick, the funny thing with that, I think Tarasol had 111 of those 115 yards. The other four yards, I think, went to Andrew McKenzie on the two, two short touchdowns. Yards. Two carries, two touchdowns yeah. for Andrew McKenzie. That, that is the definition of efficiency That's right. for number 20 for Wilmington Friends. Let's take a look now at the Howard Wildcats. R.J. Matthews, just one interception coming into today's game. They were undefeated at 6-0, already with two picks here today. And that last one, Jason, as you alluded to earlier, felt a little bit forced as he was backpedaling toward the sideline. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's one where I think last week we saw the freshman quarterback from Sally's throw the ball away a couple times and avoid the turnovers. And there, you know, you're deep in your own territory. You would like to see maybe just throwing that ball away and then punt it out. But, uh, you know, it's he's a playmaker, and he's always going to try and make that play. And that's what you love about him. But also, as, uh, as a coach, sometimes you're like, just throw it away. But, uh, you know, and the Quakers get that field goal right before the end of the half to extend the lead to 12. Tristan Eddie Walker, 17-yarder, a 27-yarder. He's got two field goals and two attempts in the first half. We mentioned McKenzie's two touchdown runs. Tattersall, 21 carries, 111 yards. He was also then three of six for 137 yards, or excuse me, 123 yards and an interception. R.J. Matthews, six of 14, a buck 37, as you mentioned, Jason, a touchdown to two interceptions. Was able to find Damian Ross on that big 42-yard touchdown as their only scoring play of half number one. So we're about set here, fellas, for half number two. Again, Howard, they deferred after winning the coin toss, so they will receive to begin the second half, and they're going to have to get into a little bit of rhythm offensively, something we didn't see in the first or second quarter. Triplet, the lead running back this season, is playing, had a great season, 450 yards, four touchdowns, averaging 71 yards per game. He had four carries for one yard in that first half. R.J. Matthews, 200 yards, eight rushing touchdowns on the season. He had just five yards rushing in that first half. So the Friends defense has been stout, and they'll see if they can keep that going here in half number two. Christian Eddie Walker is set to get things underway, and we are here in the third quarter as that one's going to take a hop in the end zone. And what do you know, guys? A touchback. Okay, Nick, I think I thought it was going to go through the uprights. Yeah, we had a uh, player down yeah, you in the got middle of the field. Got taken Mc down. McKenzie. And there's no play on that. So I think the friends players are, are flags looking Flags came flag. flying. The flags did come. They did. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have, oh, that young man's going to get the get the, the kickoff ball. But what's going on out here? We got people running on the field. Nick, he's, he's hobbling he a little bit. He took a little bit of a spill there. That's toughness. <laughs> That's impressive. I'll tell you, that is and adversity. What, he got off the field. He said no and for no, the trainers. Exact, exactly <laughs> right. He ran out there, hobbled he, up. He is He's hurt. down. He Uh-oh. He's getting checked out by the Friends players. But see, but that's what you get. You get in, and then when you get over, you get checked out <laughs> on the sideline. That's toughness. <laughs> that's Nick, what, what I was, you like to see. What I was going to say while we're waiting for this penalty to be sorted out is the Friends defense coming off a shutout last week of Mount Zion. I know that game went sideways <laughs> toward the end, but they still shut him out 34 to nothing. This, we talk about Tattersall on offense. This is a good defensive team, too. They, you know, they, they make the very, plays. Very they, much they so. They held Archmer to Absolutely. The, one of their lowest point totals of the season. Um, you know, these, and, and they can score. I mean, they put yeah. up 34 against Archmer. Archmer had nine points in that game. Yep. That's going to be, I believe, unnecessary roughness. Yeah, if they're going to have to take it. They tackled uh, McKenzie there. And, and there was no play, Jay. No. So, so that's going to back him up to the 10-yard line. That's not going to make the coach real happy. That's, that just can't happen. You know, you're down 12 points, and you get the, you're going to get the ball at the 20 on the touchback, and you got, like you said, now you're back half the distance to the goal. You're starting at your own 10. Now, they did on their own. They scored a game. They did go 94 yards. Nick, they're stretching, they're stretching the kid out on the sideline here. <laughs> Triplet in the backfield, Jamal Johnson to the bottom of the screen, Kevin Ford's the receiver, R.J. Matthews under center on first and 10. They're going to get back to the run game, they give it to Al Zion, Triplet, he's at the 20, breaks a tackle now, the 30, and he's going to go down the sideline trying to stay in bounds, but finally pushed out just inside midfield. We talked about them getting back to the run game, they start off the second half doing just that, a big carry for Al Zion, Triplet, the senior. We said six total rushing yards in the first half. 
Uh, they already uh, that was quadruple. Third. The 33 the, right the, there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he shook a couple yeah. tackles on that, too. Yeah. But like you said, Nick, that's why he like, gets started because it'll set up that pass if you can get that ground game going. They go right back to him on first down. Picks up three through the left side before he's brought down. So they'll give him three more. So second and seven, first down sitting at the Quaker 47. Again, Howard, two turnovers in the first half, both interceptions from R.J. Matthews. Yeah, a few more turnovers today than I thought we'd see. They'll hand it off up the middle again here on second down, and he has wrapped up Zawatkis in there as well as a few other Quakers. Dobson at the bottom of the pile. I'm glad you could see that. I had no clue who was in there. <laughs> so three carries in a row to Al Zion Triplett, the team's leading rusher. This is big, third and four. This is a you know, big play for Howard here. Picks up three more, as Mike mentioned, seven carries for 40 yards it might, for the senior running back. Might, it be might be two down territory, I was Jay. just going to say, Mike, you took the words right out of my mouth. I think this is, you know, down 12. The way the Quakers have moved the ball on offense it might be two down territory here. Gordon Johnson to the top of the screen. Matthews in the gun. They'll roll him out to the left. He'll look to throw on third and four. Here comes the pressure, and that time he will throw it away. And this time on third down, they decide to go away from the run. I don't think there's any way you see a punt here, but I've been wrong before. I'm with you, Mike, and I've also been wrong before, but uh, you know, I think that's why he threw and it away. not dropping anybody back. Well, Looks like the punt team dropped yeah. out yeah. for Matthews, Howard. Matthew's the punter. <laughs> Remember last time, he faked deep in his own territory at the 10-yard at the line uh, and was met by a uh, Tattersall. Yeah. That's going to be on my top playlist. Fourth and three for Howard. McKenzie back deep for Friends. They will kick it away. It's blocked. Robert Tattersall blocked it. And now Friends going the other way. It's Dobson. He's going to be dragged down inside the 10. And special teams once again. It's been great for the Quakers all year long. They blocked field goals earlier in the year. They do, or punts again, and they do one that time. Robbie Tattersall all over the field on all three phases of the game. What can he do? I mean, I didn't know we we're going to pick a first state orthopedics player in the game afterwards. And right now, he looks like he's going to get that award the way he's played. So wow. that time, it ends, actually ends up being worse than if you would have went for it on fourth down and got stuffed. Yeah. Now you lose a bunch on the blocked punt. Yeah, Nick, they're at the uh, inside the 10. They're at the seven yard line. Looks like seven or eight. Matthews is going to ask Ritter, I, I don't want to punt again. <laughs> Well, two times he went back there to punt in this game. He's met. He was met with Tattersall. Well, we did French Tatton last year, and uh, Robbie blocked the punt and returned it for a touchdown. First and goal from the seven. Tattersall in the gun. He'll follow his blockers up the middle, and he'll be dropped just outside the goal line. Might have picked up four or five, though. If you're Howard here, defense, if you can hold the three, it's a win, Nick. Uh, you want to keep him out of the end zone. The score here puts him up, uh, you know, He's most He's hobbling a little points. bit, Nick. I'm sorry, Jay. Yeah. That's, no, that's a good point there, Mike, because Tattersall came over for the play call, a little hobbled up. And again, he's been doing so much offensively, defensively on special teams. You don't see that out of a lot of players here in today's game. And yeah, a little bit shaken up there, it seems. Hopefully he's okay. 9.47, clock ticking, 20 to eight. His friends looking to add another score. Tattersall in the gun on second and goal from the three. He'll take the snap, looking for somewhere to run. He's going to try to follow his blockers forward. Mondry had him by the ankles, and he'll be stopped short of the goal line. I guess he's not that hobbled up if he's going to be running the ball. But uh, he does so much for this team. And uh, number one, we don't want to see anybody getting hurt. And number two, he does so much for, for the Quakers. You just can't, you can't overstate how important he is to this and team. And I will say, having played for my father growing up, if I came over hobbled like that, <laughs> he would say, hey, you're getting the ball next play. Get back out there. And that's what Robbie Tattersall is doing. You know what my dad said? I want to score, so I'm not giving you the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Third and goal from the two. Tattersall under center. He's got a host of Quakers behind him. They'll turn, give to McKenzie, and why not? He's a touchdown machine. The hat trick. Yeah, you called it, Nick, the hat trick. You know, Tattersall, get, get, I'll get you down to the one, you get me in. <laughs> but, uh, another nice, uh, and that's the way, you know, you got to get the points after the block. Um, 
uh, punt, and they did. Yeah, Jay, you're, you made a great point. You, you can take it down to the seven yard line. If you're not gonna return that ball for a touchdown, you have you have to convert, you have to score. Now it's 26 to eight. We're gonna check, but I don't assume anything here on the extra point, but there's Mr. Automatic. And uh, Nick, it's a 19 point game. That's three scores. Again, Howard hasn't seen anything like this all season long. 27 to eight, the Quakers out on top here on the road at early five o'clock kickoff here on this Friday night. And it all started on special teams with number 17, Rob Tattersall, breaking through that line on fourth and three, blocking the punt of RJ Matthews, ended up being returned to the seven, and they're able to punch it in from there on forward. And again, we talked about special teams. They can be so important, but it's fourth and three, you're at midfield. Howard had the opportunity to go for it. They said wanted to punt again. You wouldn't imagine that the punt would have been blocked, so you get that 100%. But again, friends making all the right plays here tonight well, in this one. Well, you, we want to say how, you know, we looked at the total yards in the first half, but how important is special teams? You have a kicker who can kick the ball in the end zone to kick field goals. You block punts, and on the last fourth down play where they faked it, your you know star player made a, a hit, so you got the ball. I mean, that's how setting up some Quaker scores today, and that, that is that through the uprights? That's not coming back. <laughs> well, you, if you, you might have heard on the crowd, Mike, you had some uh, fans go, "Oh my!" or some alls here in front of us on the stands that after did, that foot made contact with the football. That landed at, at the base of the goal pad versus Howard. There, on, it hit the, it hit, the, had, hit that pad on the bounce. 8.47 to go here in quarter number three. Howard got the football, but once again, it was Friends that scores first here in the second half. They lead 27 to eight. Here comes RJ Matthews. They have, we talked about it, the ability and capability to score at any moment. Oh, absolutely. And they're gonna need to get something going here. A lot of time left. Matthews back in the gun on first and 10. Triplet is to his right, he'll look to throw. Fires ball, tipped and almost intercepted. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Was that Colin Heron that was close to reeling it in? 50, 55? And I think it was 50 Heron. I can't see the size, the second number, Nick, but I think you're right. Yeah, it was Colin Heron. We've heard his name a few times tonight. The senior, 6'3", 205. Not sure if he was the one that got a hand on it, but he was the one that almost picked it off. And what you can see Friends is gonna do, they know Howard has to throw the ball so they can drop a couple guys back, just fire away at, at, at the offensive line of Matthews, and you never know, ball's tipped. They can sniff another interception. Here we go, second and 10. This time they'll hand it off. Get into the hands of Al Zion Triplett. That's why, Mike, I like the, how they established, tried to establish that running game early last drive. Uh, but then, you know, the block putt, and now you fall back behind by even more. You're, like you said, you almost forcing yourself to throw the ball. So a few yards on the carry for Triplett. Yeah, they're still looking at a third and eight here. Third and eight upcoming, ball sitting at the 23. Yeah, eight or nine, Nick in the third quarter. Just to explain, we're, the way we're set up here in this press box, I have a shot at the clock, and Nick and Jason, eh, a little bit of one. Johnson and Ross to the right side. They'll look to throw, Matthews. Looking to go, he's gonna fire it, looking for Ross, and he'll throw this one away. And Johnson had to step down the field, just wasn't able to see him. But again, how impressive, guys, has this secondary for Wilmington Friends been today? I mean, even though the, the, the deep passes that Matthews had completed, the coverage has been there. His receivers have gone up and gotten the ball, and he's thrown it in the right spot. This Quaker defense, they're just coming in, they're, they're you know, they're rushing. It's a really good defense. I think a lot of players don't see this this team a lot. Yes. So yeah, I think we, we saw friends at Archmere, right? And this yep. is my fourth time seeing Howard this year. So, uh, but you're right, not especially the Howard games, it's tough. You can't get in here to watch them. That snap is low. Matthew's gonna try to make something happen. Un unable to do so, and that is a turnover on downs deep in Howard's territory. That snap, though, just rolled on the ground, and not things just starting to go wrong here for Howard. And Matthews did a great job because Tatters great job. Tatters That's a great point. Tattersall was right in there again. <laughs> Shocker, you know, and uh, um, like you said, he, in, you know, then he's got to try and throw the ball and make something happen. And but uh, the special teams is the difference here. You know, that's three times they've gone back to punt. And I don't think the ball has left Matthew's foot. And when the one that did left his foot was blocked and <laughs> went the other way. So, you know, right now, 
Quakers are winning all three assets of this game. And we talk about Tattersall getting that block. There were there were about three other Quakers in the backfield with him. Yep. Uh, Robbie just happened to be the man who got the hands on the ball. But here we go, Jay. This, they can really put it away here. Tattersall under center on first and 10 after the missed punt for Howard. They'll turn and hand it off to McKenzie. I think that they're content here to okay, chew up some okay clock. You might see that, that first drive all over again with the run, 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 run. And then maybe Jay, maybe throw in a play action pass there just to fool everybody. And you know, friends, if you're friends, you you, you don't want to give them a chance. And guys, that was yep. the first carry for McKenzie that didn't go for a touchdown. I think we might see more carries from him here just mm -hmm. in the way. Ease it up on Tattersall, right? Yes. Tattersall with 23 carries here tonight. This time they'll pitch it to the outside. McKenzie breaks the tackle, but not going to get much more. A few after the broken tackle will make it second in around six. Yeah, I mean, that's a, like I said, well, I think we'll see more of McKenzie be, here in your in field goal range. It'll be third down. Yep, you are correct, Mike. Third and six upcoming for the Quakers. Deep into Howard territory now inside the red zone. Ball at the Wildcat 19 yard line. But no hurry and really no, you know, there's no emergency here for the Quakers. They're kind of holding all the cards here. Jackson Black alongside Jason Hughes to the left. Hughes in motion to form trips to the top of the screen. Tattersall will follow his blockers around the edge. He'll lean forward. They say he lost the football. He did. The ball came out. Who jumped on it? Friends is thinking Howard the way they're running. Howard's pointing that way. No call down on the field. I think even Friends is pointing that way. And now they're going to stop play. And they'll give it to the Wildcats. So the ball comes out of the hands of Robbie Tattersall on the quarterback keeper. And now the second turnover for Friends and Tattersall here today. Yeah, so, you know, they get, again, great field position, and, and they turn it over. Uh, I think the referees were discussing just to make sure he wasn't down on the play. I think they realized Howard had recovered the fumble. Uh, but he had to make sure that he wanted to check you with the other officials there. And this is a great officiating crew, by the way. Yeah, so a little bit of life kicked into the Wildcats here as they get the ball back on the Tattersall turnover. 6-18 remaining, quarter number three, a 27-8 ball game. First and 10 for R.J. Matthews, who goes under center. He'll turn, give to the left side, triplet. Just nothing there. Yeah, and you said it. Maybe a few on the first down carry. Quakers have done a great job against the run all game long, except for that 133-yard run to open the second half. There's just nowhere for this Howard offense to run. Another gain of three for Triplett as he's a little bit hobbly after that carry. Second and seven now for the Howard Wildcats. I mentioned this was this is Howard's last yeah. game as they will finish the season on the road. They have they do have a bye week the week they were supposed to play AI. Once again, they'll turn, hand it off out of the I formation. Triplett making a few nice moves. He's going to be close to first down yardage, really close on that carry. He's out to the 23, and that's going to be a new set of downs for Howard. You know, I, I, I like that, you know, trying to get the down. ground game established, but you also, you know, Matthews has been under pressure when he's throwing, so if you can focus the Quakers' defense on the ground game that you can run the ball, maybe you can get by Matthews some more time. Six carries, 53 yards in the second half or third quarter alone for Al Zion Triplett. And they tried to go right back to him on first down, I believe. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but falls forward. And still able to pick up about three or four. And I'll give him four on the carry. He's out to 11 carries for 58 yards, and now second and six upcoming for Howard. And again, they're taking their time a little bit right now. Plenty of time left in this game, though they're trailing by three scores. Looks like Matthews going back up under center here on second and seven. Kelly, the lone receiver to the bottom. They'll turn, hand off, able to break a tackle. Could have been a TFL as Zawadkis was in the backfield but couldn't bring him down. But a short carry that time for, I believe, Al Zion Triplett yet again. And he's getting a bolt load of the work here. Yeah, you know, and they picked up a first down last, you know, earlier in the series, and 
It's been all run since the uh, the uh, fumble. Quick snap. And a guy to extend it for first down yardage as they got through the hole to the left side Madry is Madry. Or Madry, excuse me, he takes that carry for eight. So another first down for Howard, back to back first downs here on this drive for the Wildcats, just trying to get some type of rhythm going. They've yet to find that here today. Yeah, it really, uh, you know, the Quakers have done a great job. I think on all three phases of have outplayed Howard here today. But, you know, Howard's starting to get some traction to get this ground game open. Maybe a little play action pass might be coming soon. Madry, the tailback. Matthews will turn and hand to the freshman. Looking for somewhere to go. Not much doing on that carry for Madry. I believe Dobson and Tattersall in on the tackle as well as Michael Bonner. So no gain for Madry. Tick down to almost three minutes left here in the third quarter. That's the all, you know, you're down by 19 and you're running, you're taking some time off your your thing, but right now it's, a little, Howard just needs to find some kind of offense and they're starting to get it behind their ground. Again, Rayshon Matthews, the senior, he's the offensive coordinator for the Wildcats. Pryor in motion, play action for R.J. Matthews. He's gonna look down the sideline, that was covered, so he dumps it off to Pryor, but it's gonna be a tackle for the loss. And guess who, fellas? Robbie Tattersall. No, you don't say. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what, I don't want to hit tackle on me, that's for sure. He leaves, <laughs> he leaves a mark when he makes a tackle. So they left that one out to Naeem Pryor, the junior tight end who made the catch. It went for a loss of one. And now third and 12 for the Howard Wildcats. Going to need to get this if they want a chance of coming back in this ball game. First down marker sitting at their own 43, 44 yard line. Here we go, third and 12. Matthews in the shotgun. Here's the snap, quick trigger, fires, has his man Jamal Johnson. And he's going to be really close to that first down marker. Might have had it when he made the catch. Did come back a yard or two. Yeah, that, that, that's He's going to be a yard different. short, guys. I would say that's the difference. So they'll mark him a yard short. That one good for 11. Got to go for it. Now here. you got to go for it. When you're down some minute 40 left in the third quarter, you're down 19 points. Three catches, 49 yards for Jamal Johnson. One of them coming on that big 32 yard catch down the sideline. Also missed once or twice open as well down the field. As RJ Matthews now up to 147 yards passing. Back in the almost the punt formation. Fourth and two. And they'll call a timeout. They're going to want to talk this over. But you're right, Jason. They were lined up in the punt formation. And you, uh, good job by the coach to get the timeout because the uh, back judge was throwing up that, that play clock thing. But yeah, he was in the backfield. It almost looked like they wanted to punt. And, and down 19 points, uh, you know, you got to do it. So clock stopped right now. The third fell is at 115. So 115 remaining in quarter number three. You're still coming up on here. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can hear Mike uh, at home. The headset giving him some trouble. Maybe it's the crowd. Mike, we'll have to hand him the microphone maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he is coming up. Okay, that's. There? We just had him there for a second. Yeah, just a second. There, there I am, is. back. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Nick, I'll call the next six plays just to make it. <laughs> now, it's all you, buddy. <laughs> here we go, 115, fourth and one. This time, Matthew's not in the punt formation. He'll be under center. I guess it's the right call. You know, Matthew can almost. He'll look to the sideline, get the play call. That's after a timeout, too. He's still looking for a play call. I think they were waiting to see what the Quakers' defense was looking at. So fourth and two. Under center, Matthews on fourth down. He'll turn, he's hammered. Ball is loose. Zawatkis making first contact. Wow. He met the runner on the handoff. Guess who recovered the fumble? Uh, Tattersall? Tattersall. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered anyway. As, uh, he was not going to have the first down because he was hit as soon as, at, as, soon as the backfield. Uh, Hudson Zawatkis right on that. But, and the ball rolled. And guess who was there? It was Robbie on the spot, man. He got, 
he was he's what kind of night he, just we're living in Robbie Tattersall's world man that's all our first broadcast for the Quakers and you know you've been seeing it on Twitter hearing about it in the articles Rob Tattersall well now you got a chance to see it with your own eyes for everybody at home and us personally up here in the box at Abyssinio first down there he goes He'll keep it, follow some blockers forward, and pick up about four. And Nick, there's Hudson Zawatskis right there, number nine. He made a big tackle. We've seen a couple of those tonight. And just a great play by Hudson. Zawatskis laying the boom on that yep. fourth down. Stopping the Wildcats in their tracks. Knocking the ball loose. And forcing their turnover. Clock continues to run, 44 seconds and ticking here. Winding down third quarter action. No reason to hurry at all. This would be the, probably the last play of the quarter, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm with you, Mike. Pass, Two backs for Tattersall on second and six. He'll fake the run. He's going to throw it over the top, looking for Zawadkis, who makes the catch at the 15, and he's dragged down at the five. And just when you think they're going to run it, run it, run it, Tattersall over the top on play action. I love the call there, you know. Still late third quarter, like Mike said, you're probably gonna go to the fourth quarter, but man, you take that another shot. Just shows you how good this team is. They're gonna let this one wind down. That's gonna be our last play of the third quarter. A 35 yard completion from Tattersall to Zawadkis. And that'll do it for the third. Zawadkis, three catches, 93 yards. And that last one gonna set them up with first and goal to go. And we'll take a break with the fourth quarter right around the corner here on Delaware Live Sports. The Quakers leading Howard here on the road, 27 to eight in a matchup of number one versus number two. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action right here on Delaware Live Sports. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. All Quakers here from Abyssinio Stadium on Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison Drini alongside Jason Winchell and Mike Lang here on the Vitter side of Abyssinio Stadium, a five o'clock kickoff between number one friends and number two Howard. And guys, Wilmington friends, prime time here with us for the first time all season. Maybe the first time people are getting a chance to check out the Quakers here with their own two eyes and they are living up to that ranking of number one in class 2A. They have played a phenomenal football game through three quarters tonight. And we mentioned that, uh, you know, Howard was one a couple weeks ago and couple of us flipped in the Super 7s. I think it's because we saw how dangerous this Quakers offense is. Speed option, Tattersall pitches it over to McKenzie. Robert Kelly comes up and makes the tackle after maybe a, a carry for no gain. The clock will run here. Yep. I was just gonna say. You know, Again, but we're just fresh into the fourth quarter. Yep. That sun, uh, the, uh, sunset down there. How about that? It is beautiful night, mid October. This is some great football weather. This is getting a little bit chillier, but should be beautiful tomorrow. Yeah, Friday night high for uh, some Blue Hen homecoming. If anybody is in the area, Morgan State and the Hens. Here we go, second and goal now from the six. Tattersall, quarterback power, lowering his shoulder, and he punches it in. Six yard touchdown run for Rob Tattersall. And friends, pouring it on here at Abyssinio Stadium. Yeah, they're doing it everything, everything well in this game. They're winning all three phases here uh, today, and uh, man, it's been a great performance for this Quakers team. And 
Nick, I saw him against Arch Marinette that week in my Super 7s. They've you been did. number one for me the whole uh, the last, you know, four or five weeks. Uh, I'm just glad everyone's get, uh, getting a chance to see how good this team is. Christiani Walker uh, right Extra through. Extra point is good. 34 to 8 with 11.07 remaining. This Howard offense has been stifled. And the Howard defense that was so good the last time we checked him out has been so good throughout the year, having issues with Rob Tattersall and the Quaker offense. And again, when we talked to Howard, we talked to them a few times this year, and they were so hungry coming into the season after what happened last year, after coming off back-to-back -back state championships, a little bit of a down year last year, and we talked to them before the season started, and they were all so excited, ready to go, and it showed what a start. For them, 6-0 undefeated, top one, top two teams here in the last couple weeks. But running into a buzzsaw here tonight with the Quakers. Imagine how tough this District 2 is. You have Friends, Howard, Archmer, all, you know, in the district. And they might be the three top teams, in, you know, That's in right. this Class 2A, and they're in the same division. The ball kind of fell off the tee as he went to kick it there. And good kick winds up in the hands of Kevin Ford. Showing off the speed, gonna break a few tackles, hit hard though and hammered on the far sideline. And making the play was Andrew McKenzie. So 10.58 remaining in this one, 34 to eight. Friends over Howard, here comes RJ Matthews in that Wildcat offense and now we can maybe expect to see them take some shots down the field. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, you know, you, now you, if you're Howard, you're looking, you know, to make some maybe a quick score and try and you know onside kick or something, but uh, you know right now it's been all Quaker, especially here in the second half. Matthews in the shotgun. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen, one at the top. Two running backs, one on each side of Matthews. First and ten from their own 35 for the Wildcats. They'll take the snap, and they'll hand it off. A big hole up the middle. And that was Kevin Ford. Or excuse me, that's the freshman Madry with a big carry. That's probably one of the biggest holes uh, they've had all day. Uh, you know, a nice big run here on first down. 19-yard carry, and you said it, Jay. That is by far the longest of the day. Or excuse me, the 34-yard earlier from Triplett, but that's the second longest for Madry and the Howard offense. So first and 10 now into Friends territory. Matthews in the gun. Looking at the sideline, fires, almost intercepted. As once again, Jason Hughes made a perfect read on it. He was looking for Kevin Ford in the flat. Ball deflected and incomplete. Hughes just read Matthews' eyes and made a break on the ball. And like you said, if he makes that pick, that's a pick six. Uh, but uh, you know, this Friends defense is, is a really, I think, underrated defense. They, they opened the season at Delmar, which is not an easy play to go. To. They held that Wildcat offense that's given teams fits from almost nothing. That kind of put they, them on the map there, yep. right? Then they, you know, they held Archmer to nine points, one of their lowest score, the defending state champs, one of their lowest scores. And here this Howard team, just eight points, and this Howard team can score. Yes, they can. Again, coming in, R.J. Matthews had 21 total touchdowns. Now he'll fire to the sideline, has his man, and... In and out of the hands of his intended target, Jamal Johnson. That'll set up third and ten. Again, great coverage there by Hughes. Even if, if he makes the catch, it's right now on the sideline. He's probably going to push him out of bounds. Uh, no, I think this Quaker secondary, uh, like you said, Matthews has put up numbers all year. And I know he completed a couple long passes, but the Quakers' secondary has really surprised me. Yes, here they have. They've today, looked the good. Way they played. Eight of 21, 147 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. Eight of 21 is what the Quakers have held Matthews to through the air. 10 21 remaining in the game. Third and 10. They'll roll Matthews out of the pocket. Going to have to throw across his body here, and he'll just throw it away as he got to the sideline. He was being chased by Rob Tattersall and Dobson was there as well. And now fourth and 10 upcoming for the Wildcats. Yeah, I mean, Matthews is going to see Tattersall in his nightmares tonight. I mean, <laughs> he's like, wait a second, I thought you play safety. Why are you chasing me? <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, 
you know, even if he completes that pass, he's not going to be able to get a, a much all, you know, on it because he's rolling out and trying to throw back in the field of play. So fourth and ten. Big play for the Wildcats with 10-14 remaining, trailing 34 to eight. Going to need to pick this one up. You mentioned the winner of this is probably going to win the District 2. Uh, they'll have the head-to-head -head over the other team. And uh, the District 1 title, I think, is on the line tonight between DMA and St. Mark's for DMA's homecoming. Trips to the bottom of the screen on fourth and 10. Matthew's going to look that way. He'll step up in the pocket, fired across the middle, and that one sails incomplete. He was looking for Jamal Johnson, and that is going to be another turnover on downs, and the Quakers able to do it again, holding Howard on fourth. Let's see if, uh, you know, every, every play, uh, even when Matthews does get the pass off, <laughs> there's just no opening. Now, uh, you know, Tyus on the offense will come back and I'm sure looking to run some time off this clock. Yeah, 10.09 to go here from Abyssinio Stadium. And again, 6.50, not even too many kickoffs underway here for us. And as we have no scores to give, you know, nothing to reference outside of what we're seeing here at Abyssinio Stadium. And again, what a performance so far by the Wilmington Friends Quakers. First and 10 now for the offense. They'll hand to Beardell here around the left side. He's hit hard after a short gain. As he was brought down, I believe, by the freshman Madry. Yeah, I think the only other game going on right now is McCain Newar. That's right, yeah. Trying to look for a score. That, that's a huge game. Uh, McCain win could sneak him in the playoff. That's right, guys, and a big one last night. As Mike Lang referenced, Tattnall and Charter in a huge matchup, Tattnall 3-3, three and three, but that schedule, those three losses to great teams, and what a battle it was with undefeated 6-0 and o Charter. The force remaining undefeated with a win last night, 7-0 and o for Wilmington to, Charter. 20-16 win over Tattnall. That was one heck of a game. Tattersall this time going to tuck in and run. It's smart play from the veteran quarterback as he'll pick up a few on the carry and the clock will continue to run. But how about France putting the ball in the air there, a little play action. And guess what, next, next week Charter has St. Elizabeth, uh, if St. E's gets by St. Andrews tomorrow night, another unbeaten team will fall next week because the two unbeatens will be playing each other. Right here on Delaware Live Sports. So That's third a, down after the scramble, Mike. That's a Friday night game there, Charter and St. E's next Friday right here at Abyssinia. We'll be right back in this very spot, Nick. I do enjoy doing games here. I will say I'm, that. Unfortunately, you won't be here. I will not be here next week, You will be partying in, in Elon. <laughs> <laughs> Heading back to Elon for a little Hens versus the Phoenix. Third and six upcoming for Tattersall and the Quakers. They'll pitch it out to McKenzie, and he will be dropped deep in the backfield. A loss of about five, and... A whole group of okay, Howard Wildcats led by Madry and Damian Ross in on the stop. Nick, you got to have a, uh, tell us your, your favorite watering hole down there at Elon. <laughs> Let's see, you got, you know, I'm a big fan of Cookout. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Cookout. It's a fast food place. They have it in the I see the that all, like when we when dry the Myrtle Beach, I, I see it all the I do love Cookout. Signs. I love Cookout. It's not the best, but that's just something <laughs> I like. You got Bojangles down there. Well, of course Bojangles. Fat yeah. Frog is, is a local place over there I used to go to. Tell you, that's some good stuff down there. It's for the food, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, and I want to say this, Elon is right next to Burlington, and Burlington may have the most restaurants and fast food per square mile in the country. That punt's going to be fielded at the 20. I believe that's Kevin Ford as he tries to go down the sideline, and we have that's some players going at it at midfield. Damian Ross and Beardell. There, so 7.36 is clock stopped here in the fourth quarter. Howard offense coming out onto the field, trailing 34 to eight. Yeah, and uh, I think Pat Gary and this is gonna make his Northern Crew debut. There we go. That's right, it's because the Vike. The fighting Pat Gary and are in action next week. And Pat. There you go, end of first quarter score, Newark seven, McCain. Nothing. There we go. One score update for everybody at home. First and 10 for Howard. They'll start this one at the 30. Matthews will be in the gun here on first down. I 
He'll look to throw. Fires across the middle. Has Kevin Ford who is hit hard. And then still going to drag some defenders forward. Not sure how he held on to the ball. I think it's Fred is saying they did have Ryan the ball. Tattersall pull the ball out? But I think they called him down already. Yeah, right. Looks like they did. Tattersall, this time Ryan thought he came up with the turnover. That's going to be a catch and a big game there. One of, of seven, or excuse me, 18 yeah. on the pitch and catch. One of those ones where I think they sit down by contact. So that one good for 18 to Kevin Ford. His first catch of the game. It's surprising to hear me say that this late in the fourth quarter. Seven minutes. Matthews back in the shotgun. He'll look to throw. Here comes the pressure. Matthews will throw it up in the air and in and out of his hands of his intended target. A good throw on the run from R.J. Matthews. He was looking for Robert Kelly, and now Kelly's down at the 30. Got a timeout on the field for an injured Wildcat. So that'll stop and play here for a second. Trainer left Tattersall just laying there on the side of the field. But the, uh, I think Robbie's just getting stretched out, and then she, she's got to go check on Kelly because he looks like he's in a little distressed over there on our left. Yeah, went up for the catch and then took a hard fall as he did so. You would think maybe maybe Tattersall comes out and they put it back up in there. Just He's, he's walking a little gingerly. You don't want to have him getting any more injured. Maybe Ryan Tattersall? Uh, not. <laughs> Friends are on the road next week at Brandywine High School at 6 o'clock. Kickoff at Brandywine next uh, Saturday. It is homecoming for and senior night for Brandywine and Howard. As my uh, phone's going a little slow here. Howard, like we said, this is their last home game. They play at Tower Hill next Friday night, 6.30 p.m. No, 4.30 p.m. kickoff. Uh, Tower Hill has a limited spectator policy. Please see details on their homepage. Oh, I already said that. That, that, is, that is for the last playoff spot in District 2. There's no ancestor butts because the uh, winner will have the tiebreaker over the other person. So even if they only have one more district game left after last uh, after tomorrow, so and they're tied going into tomorrow, so... It's not been in the tournament. So both teams set to come back out on the field after the injury timeout. Is Kelly still down on the sideline? He was trying to get up. And you know, we'll it. take a break yep. here on Delaware Live Sports. The Quakers leading 34 to 8 over Howard. We'll be right back with more fourth quarter action. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation and five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation and five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. High Five. Robert Kelly now being aided to the far sideline along with the help of the trainers. Took a bad fall but you're it's great to see him up and seeming to be relatively okay. You know, I like to speculate as to what happened, but he's going to be able to get to his sideline under 
or with a little bit of aid there from the trading staff, but he is up, which is always a good sign. Again, good evening, everyone. Nick Allison, Drini, as we get deeper into Friday night, I should say, alongside Jason Winchell and Mike Lang. Again, a battle of number one versus number two, and friends came in, guys, in our rankings as the top team in Class 2A, and they have lived up to that ranking here tonight. Yeah, they really have. It's been uh, a dominant performance from the Quakers, and... Uh, I think it's really turning some heads. Matthews out of the gun, he'll look to pass. Dobson had the pass rush. He's gonna be wrapped up and sacked. A collective rush from that entire Friends defensive front. And they're able to bring him down. Colin Heron helped lead the way alongside Philip Crock, the two seniors in on the play. And they have been rushing for for the most of the game, and they've been able to get pressure on R.J. Matthews, both offensively and defensively. The Quakers up front have been fantastic today. They really have. Their line is really strong. I think that's a lot of, a lot of people think, don't think Quaker, uh, when they see the Fred team, that they have a good offensive and defensive line, but their line has control a lot of things. And even when he uh, hasn't been sacked, he's been running for his life a lot today, Matthews. 6.09 and ticking, third and long. Matthews gonna roll out of the pocket, fire over the top, has his man who leaps up and makes the catch. That was Damian Ross, not gonna be good for a first down, but gonna get a big chunk back, and Zawatkis almost able to get a hand on that one. He elevated, put his hand up, and Matthews did a good job of putting it over top of Zawatkis into the hands of Damian Ross. Yeah, you know, it, it, again, that's a nice play, and now he's up fourth and short here with uh, exactly six minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. It seems like uh, first three quarters flew by. This quarter, it seems like it's taken all day. 71 yards and a touchdown for Damian Ross through the air. Fourth and four. Go once again, roll Matthews out of the pocket. Looking for somewhere to go. Dobson misses him. RJ Matthews fires it up in the air. One on one down the field and it falls. Incomplete, another turnover for the Wildcats. Matthews, Matthews is pulling a Houdini out there. And again, it all once again goes back to that pass rush for Wilmington Friends. They've been getting pressure on him all day. Nine of 27 for a buck 77 for RJ Matthews. You know what I like to see there? Uh, Friends uh, defender, Colin Heron? Yeah, Colin Heron. I, uh, I've been Heron. saying Heron. I hope it's Heron. Yeah, I, and I apologize at home I if think the Herons are listening and it isn't. I think you're right. I'm wrong. As, uh, but uh, he uh, picked Matthews up there and sold him after it and said, you know, hey, keep your head held up high. And uh, it's good to see the sport, uh, both these teams have good sportsmanship. And again, both these teams maybe could see each other down yeah. the road. That's for sure as the Quakers back on offense. Tattersall will turn and hand off this time. It's Beardell, and he's going to keep the legs moving. And he picks up eight on his first carry. Okay, so I think we're just going to see a healthy dose of some run plays here. Oh, excuse me, that was McKenzie, I apologize. Healthy dose of running plays here, keep this clock running. Uh, like I said, friends gets out of here. Uh, they're on the road at Brandywine next week. Howard is on the road at Tower Hill. Both Friday night uh, games. Well, Tower Hill, Howard's at 430, and friends, Brandywine's six. Second and two after the eight yard carry from Andrew McKenzie. Clock now at five minutes and continuing to wind here in the fourth. Back to McKenzie. And he's gonna be real close, depends on the spot. And that's gonna be enough for a first down. McKenzie now up to eight carries for 21 yards, but three of them have been for scores. So we'll go back here. I'm just going to flash back a little bit. It was 10 to 8 at one point, 24 straight points That's for Friends. That's a great point, Jay. And you know, it seemed like the play changed on that, you know, it was second and 15 for Friends. Uh, Tattersall called a timeout, designed a nice pass play, you know, that set up, uh, you know, a big play, and they went in and scored a touchdown there and, and hasn't looked back since. And a big interception by Ryan Tattersall earlier in the game. McKenzie spins off a defender and picks up seven on the first down carry. Yeah, a nice spin move. McKenzie takes it for a gain of seven. Uh, yeah, big play there. Yeah, 
there. Like I said, if you're Quakers here, they're just, you know, they're gonna keep running the ball and try to run out the remaining four minutes here and, and get out of here and head back. Uh, their short drive to At Friends School. Three minutes, Jay. I timed that I passed the school <laughs> on the way here and, you know, I just wanted to figure how long would it take them to get over here? Three minutes. <laughs> That's right, maybe they did walk for a warm up. We heard Mike say that maybe they walked. Uh, we'll see. They look warmed up and ready to go today, though. That is for sure. And if you're a fan watching this game, you might be done in time to check out the Phils at 740. That Second one? and three. They'll turn and give it back up the middle. And McKenzie lowering the shoulder, taking some defenders with him, and he'll have enough for a new set of downs. Score update from uh, McC McCain, Newark 20, McCain nothing. Thanks. Thank, I'm going to thank Marty for that one. I saw his there you uh, go, Marty. His tweet on uh, Twitter. And Marty we love and John and Marty of the Delaware High School Football Podcast. They do such great work over there. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you head over to YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and take a listen. They're going to highlight, obviously, everything that's happened this week. podcast comes out every Sunday. Yeah, I, I always look forward to it. Uh, in fact, last Sunday, me and Mike were driving down to UD Volleyball, and we had the podcast on it in my car. <laughs> there you go. It's the best time. First and ten, back to McKenzie they go. And another spin move and another good chunk on first down for number 20 in white. Oh, excuse me, this time it's Beardell. They both got the two zeros and the three zeros. They'll get me uh, up here in the press box, but that time it was Beardell. He picks up eight yards on his carry, and now Beardell and McKenzie going back and forth with some big carries for friends. That's the good thing about Mike being uh, outside. You can see it a little bit better. I mean. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm looking right into this thing, so I'm going uh, by the uh, screen on the computer. So give them eight, second and two, 2.15 and ticking. Here in the fourth quarter, friends, two minutes away from improving to 7-0 and oh and remaining undefeated. Tattersall gives to Beardell, lowers his shoulder, runs right into Kevin Ford and picks up four and enough for a first down. Nice uh, Phils, right? big Go drive Phils. there. And, uh, and you can hear the Wilmington sure Friends crowd. Ball. They're now yeah, switching yeah, focus. Yeah, it went from, hey, we've got this one wrapped up. Let's go Phillies. You can hear them talking out in front of us. You know, we got the win here on this side, says the Quakers. And now we'll go watch some baseball here a little bit later on. But Howard Wildcats, they're going to fall to 6-1 and one as the clock continues to wind. 153 and ticking here. Mike Lang got his Philly shirt underneath that jacket. And Howard, though, again, one of the most impressive teams we've had a chance to check out this season. The defense has been great all year, but the Quakers able to find a way to score points, and the offense probably won't see another game offensively like we did out of Howard here tonight. Now, Dad, I'll tell you what, this was, uh, you know, a good, good uh, Howard offense, and Friends has done a great job holding them to just eight points. Offsides on Howard there on the first down play. So they'll rewind the clock at 136, and it will run 34 to 8. The Quakers coming on the road and playing an almost flawless game here against the Howard Wildcats. Howard couldn't get anything going offensively, again, from such a talented offense they have, led by R.J. Matthews. Came in with some stellar numbers, 13 touchdowns through the air, eight touchdowns on the ground, 21 total. And the Wildcats held to just one score today, a 42-yard pass from Matthews to Damian Ross. And there's Tattersall taking a knee. That's the, your favorite formation if you're a quarterback or a player on offense, the victory formation. And that is what Tattersall and the Quakers lined up in, and they'll take a knee, and the clock will run. And guys, friends, they'll remain number one atop those Class 2A rankings, improve to 7-0. Howard will fall maybe a few spots, a spot or two, if not remain at number two after the loss, probably will drop a few as they get their first loss of the season and they'll fall to six and one. Yep, and uh, you know, it, it was a great performance. Uh, you know, I'll name a player of the game afterwards and uh, I'm just trying to get the final statistics here for him, but I know where I'm leaning toward. Well, I'll ask you first as the clock just moments away from hitting all zeros here at Abyssinio Stadium. The Wilmington Friends Quakers come on the road with a 5 o'clock kickoff and get the victory over the second-ranked team in the state. 34-8, the Quakers will remain at number one 
and improved to 7-0. and oh. Let's get you some of these statistics here quickly, guys. Tattersall only put the ball in the air eight times, but he completed five of them for over 170 yards. Five of seven, 158 yards, and an interception for Robbie Tattersall. Doing it all, they look at the carries, 26 carries, 138 yards, and a touchdown for the senior, Robbie Tattersall. He's gonna be my vote for player of the game. I know I usually don't get to pick, Jay, but <laughs> I have a feeling that's where you two were leaning. Uh, yeah, I think, that's, uh, I think that's an easy call for us. Uh, he did it all, um, he could finish with if I did uh, math right, 200 and, uh, eight, uh, 208 total yards, and uh, that was uh, a great performance uh, by him uh, here. Uh, player of the game, your first day work though, player of the game, Robbie Tattersall doing it all, and they held that Howard offense in check. Defense phenomenal, check mark offense, great check it, and special teams, a blocked punt that set up a score Check that box as well. All three phases the Quakers excelled at here tonight. Helps them get that victory in the number one versus number two matchup. Guys, before we part ways here, anything that you'd like to, to say to everyone at home after this big one-two matchup? I'll just say, you know, it was a great matchup. We got to see where these uh, players, were, you know, the, these teams were. And I think this will send a notice to other people who might not uh, realize how good this Quaker team is. Uh, they really dominated here today, and uh, I, I don't think Howard's done yet. I mean, no, I this agree. Class 2A, District 2, I had Howard, Archbear, and Friends all have a bye in the first round, top four seeds, all from the same District 2. How about that? M Mike, what are you leaving here thinking here tonight after seeing this match? <clears throat> well, I've seen Robbie Tattersall play a lot. <laughs> just when you think you've seen everything, he just keeps showing you more, and it's amazing. Just everything he does for this team. But he's not alone. You know, Nick, we, we streamed these guys a couple years ago at Caravel. Remember yeah. that game? They had 24, 23 players yes, on the roster. They have over 30, 35 kids on this roster. So they're growing the program. They, they haven't dropped off quality-wise. And it's, it's amazing what they do uh, right behind us up the street here in Alapocas. It's, it's a great program. It really is. Absolutely. And, again, we have the luxury of – calling games with some great guys. Bill Harmon, a member of that group, and he always helps out at different schools, and this is one of the schools that he's had the chance to help out, help out at. And again, they're on the, on the rise. Here are the Wilmington Friends Quakers, a big win for them here at, or excuse me, on the road against number two, Howard. So that'll do it here from Abyssinio Stadium. What a performance for Wilmington Friends. They get the victory here over the Howard Wildcats. For Nick Allison, Drini, Mike Lang, and Jason Winchell, we will see you next time. We've got some other great games right here that you can check out on the YouTube page, some great ones from the North, from the South and Central crew. And then tomorrow, some more action as well with Sussex Central, Dover, or excuse me, Dover and Smyrna tomorrow afternoon. So we will see right you now. then. Check out some games right now. The Phillies on in a little bit. Some great stuff here on the Friday night for everyone here at Delaware Live Sports. We'll see you next time. Quakers, big win over Howard.